Hello and welcome back to Crestfallen D and D: The Argent Flame. Uh, here we have with us is Adam. Uh, I'm Adam. I play Zemdak Flint Sweeper. Um, as a gnome, I also have a bunch of nicknames. So if you hear them call me by something else, that's me. Um, sometimes they do explode, but that's not on purpose. <laughs> Unless it is. <laughs> Uh, I'm Theo. Um, I will, or I am actually today, Sofka, just Sofka. Um, and she may not have taken a bath, but she'll still play with rats. Like, she'll still give a rat a hug. <laughs> uh, I'm Kevin. I'm playing uh, Cole Vodison, the uh, lore bard slash new aberrant mind sorcerer. Um, and my crimson eyes are watching you. Mm. <laughs> I'm Noelle, I'm playing the Kenran wizard Thresheni Ankmut, and you know, you've got to slow your roll, Emrys. <laughs> uh, I am Cody, and I'm playing the bugbear warlock Log. Log jamming. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> No, we always we're all afraid of logs help. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> Thanks you thank you all for joining us for our live podcast. Um we're we are, you know, still working out some kinks, but we're figuring it out as so these things will get better and better as we go on. Speaking of which, um uh, I believe I've mentioned this before, but we split up our live streams because they can, can get really long into a couple episodes, which we then edit and then post later. Each of them usually, uh, if they don't already have uh, the original recap in them, we put little mini recaps in them. Kind of catch you up, you don't watch them all at one time. Um, so um, it, it, when we take our breaks, that's where we'll be splitting up our episodes. Um, great. Uh, I will do my best to post things in a timely manner, especially on the breaks, to keep you updated for like the recaps and magic items that these guys learn, but I'm only one person, so bear with me, please. Um, there, without that, I don't think we have any more announcements other than please join our Discord. Um, it is in the description. Uh, check it out. Um, a couple of us spent a lot of time. Thank you to Adam. Thank you to Cam from the uh, from the Baker's Dozen. Uh, a lot of time, and and uh, and I put a lot of time and energy into putting this up. We've got d all the recaps from all the previous sessions, all the magic items that they've discovered, some lore bits, all the maps that I've created by uh, from scratch um, using uh, some, some cool programs, a bunch of uh, cool pictures. We've got even places for you to submit your character art if you're into that kind of thing and you're an artist and you're into it. Uh, we'd love to see your art. We love that kind of stuff. We'd love to get the community involved, so please join our Discord channel. Um, we also have an, a Twitter that you should be able to see during some of our breaks. We'll put that up there. I believe it's just at Crestfall and at just Crestfallen, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, at Crestfallen, C-R-E-S-T, capital V-A-H-L-L-E-N. Uh, I do my best to just post and let you know, hey, we're about to stream. Other than that, uh, we are also working on, hopefully, trying to get a camera in here sometime in the next few months. Uh, hopefully, so you guys, so when we go to like have maps, you guys can see what's going on in the map. Um, other than that, I will just post the pictures of our beautiful painted minis after the ma after the battle. Um, anybody else have any other announcements? No? Nobody's birthday was recently? Nobody needs a hug? Uh, well, everybody. Be safe. Yeah. everybody needs a hug. After last after last Adam is no longer <laughs> sick. Adam, Adam is here yes. in person this week, which is Adam awesome. Is, yes. Adam is here in person. Um, so my voice might sound a little different. Yes. Kenton is a little delayed, but that's okay, because there's a reason for it in the story, which we will cover. Um, um, uh, Adam did not have COVID, thank goodness. He was just had a regular old sickness, so he's back at the table. Um... Uh, please be safe out there. I know Omicron is raging, so please, please, please be safe. Wear a mask, get vaccinated, that whole thing. Um, uh, <laughs> you might also hear some guest dogs every once in a while. Just right. wanted to give that heads up that you might hear. Noel and I do board quite a few dogs, uh, so uh, every once in a while they come down and they want to wrestle near us, and we'll do our best to keep that to a low, but, you know, they're just having a good time. Um, great. Um, I wanted to shout out to Cam for helping us out with all of our uh, audio logistics and everything like that. Um, I guess without further ado then, is everybody ready? Woo! Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We ready? The last session was pretty intense, so let's see what's... 
What's going yes. on here? Yeah. Oh, um, yes. And if you uh, like the stream, please click that like button. Please click that bell button so that you know notif and you're notified for when we start streaming again or when we post videos. And subscribe and share it to your friends because, you know, we're all fans of d and here. We all just want to sit down and have a good time. We'd love to have you as listeners. Great. Without further ado, then, let's talk recap, shall we? Last time, noticing that Sofka was infected by one of the zombies during the previous battle, the group decided to use the now-charged Heart of the Hopeful to cure her of the terminal infection. Setting down for a rest and awakening eight hours later, the others of the gang find Cole rocking in a corner, assailed by mental voices. Meanwhile, Gizmo retrieves the sentient idol from the bag of holding and uses magic to strengthen its imprisonment, before returning it to its extra-dimensional storage. Krasheni examines the defunct magic circle on the floor of the cavern, realizing that it has acted as some sort of amplification emitter for the necro necromantic magic of the zombie horde. Before the damaged Warforged Infantry 9 comes to, Sofka decides to take a walk down the tunnel created by the Arcane Cannon, removing herself as an enticing target. After convincing the ancient construct to stand down and deactivate, Trasheni and Zemdek attempt to dismantle and extract the brain core slash core of the Warforged in an effort to find out why the host and Master Oros were so interested and went to such great lengths to access it. But not everything goes as planned. Triggering a failsafe, the construct self-destructs, catching the geniuses in the blast and causing the cavern to begin to collapse. Hearing the explosion and feeling tremors from the collapse, the rest of the party ready spells and begin to move. Racing back down the corridor, back whence they came, the eggheads are seldom hit by falling boulders as Trasheni alters gravity to their aid. The two just make it into Cole's dome and sprint forward to the safety of the sturdy dwarven architecture, leaving the argent flame stoveling into the dwarven catacombs, panting stale air full of dust and debris. Pondering on what to do next, the party sends a message to Eleazar, hearing only sickly coughs in response, Argus getting the sense that they are acted falsehoods. With, the, with spellcraft, the group douses the location of Eleazar's armor to be somewhere in the prisons under Cairn Tower. Sofka transforms into a rat and scouts about the cells, discovering the silver dragonborn's armor with a note pinned to it. Returning to the rest of the party with the note, apparently intended for Security 4, the gang decipher that Eleazar was here, but was then spirited away by the host himself. With little options, the Argent Flame traverse the tunnels to emerge near Flixen's discount fixins, and proceed to break and enter. Knowing the shop is now newly proprietorless, the party shamelessly loot the storefront and attempt to break into the office. The lock is more difficult than anticipated, and Log eventually summons his newly acquired unseen servant on the other side of the door and within the office. In the office is found a floor safe as well as a locked desk with paper and ledgers within. However, the heavy metal box set into the floor proves resistant to their flaming lock picking and crowbar efforts. And as the noise produced begins to attract at the, the attention of the sickly stone sworn, the group flees down a hidden escape tunnel, leaving the glowing hot metal alone in a wooden building. Fearing for the well-being of Miladonath and the urchins that he cares for, the party deign to check on, in on them and arrive at the basement entrance via the sewers. In a bittersweet moment, they find about 30 urchin children that have refuge here, along with Miladonath. However, eight of them, including the only elf child among them, have been infected by zombie attacks. A painful conversation ensues where Miladonath invokes a promise to his people, but is ultimately convinced that amputating the infected limbs is lesser of the two evils. Argus and Cole agree, and a grim chore is done. The next morning, Sofka is awoken by Miladonath and brought to the roof to watch the sunrise. Promise me you will show them that they have taken, have a place in this world. I want to hear tales of you. Tears and oaths follow as the sun rises on the second of Hyloth. Welcome back to Crest Valen. Dance part. <laughs> <laughs> So, 
we fade in, the rest of you are mustering and moving about and stirring through a restless, at best, sleep. Uh, the, on, based on the chore that you had to do yesterday, especially Cole and Argus, was not the best sleep you had. Sofka, your moment on the roof. You remain on the roof, basking in the sunrise with no Adonis, just taking in the pregnant noise of the morning. The stillness is bittersweet, reassuring in its fact that nature has once again, and a new day has dawned, but also what you have had to do and what dangers still lurk and lie in wait. You have first-hand experience with what this infection can do, and you also are aware that there may be still more infected in the city. And having knowing the rate of this infection and how it works is that now that it has taken a moment to metastasize and set into the body, there are now those out there that cannot be saved. Sofka's going to look at Melodoneth and say something along the lines of, they were the lucky ones, you know? Like, unlucky and lucky. Melodoneth takes a moment. His brow, their brow furrows as they are at a loss of what to say. You kind of gather that his feelings are anything that he would say wouldn't add more to what you've already said. And for the first time in Sofka's life, she feels this anger that usually she feels sadness when these things happen. But for the first time, she feels like, kind of like a seed of rage. Like a righteous fury. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yes. Interesting. Middle Donneth can sense this in you. Um, and they put a hand on the small of your back. And they just say three words. Just be careful. You know that that means a lot more than just with your actions. It means with what you happen to do with them, your emotions, where they're going to take you. They're old and wise, and they have been... You get a sense to probably have experience with unbridled fury. And they can see that seed growing in you. And it's not like they're trying to nip it in the bud. It's more of, be careful how you cultivate this. Sofka, at first, when Miladonna puts their hand on Sofka's back, Sofka kind of flinches. Mm. But after a second, she kind of leans into it. He reciprocates, or they reciprocate, and just take a little bit of the weight off of your hunched form. It is... You're aware as to how seldom you see full elves. Half elves more, more so, that, or less so, that are more of part of the populace. But this kinship, this camaraderie is a rarity, to be sure. And, of course, you wish it was under better circumstances. But you both, in, like I said, this bittersweet moment, bask in what it is. And just allow it to sink in your porous form of emotions, uh, so fragile and vulnerable in this moment, from being tempered, struck, and struck, and struck, and struck again. Breathe for what it feels like the first time in your life as fresh air enters your lungs. The rest of you begin to stir down. Um, 
there's kind of like a dog pile, a bunch. Uh, there's not enough beds for everybody, especially for the youngins. They've kind of like a dog pile where they've all formed just a floor covered with adolescent bodies from teenagers to youngins. Um, and you just kind of have found your way, whether you're leaning, sitting, leaning up against the wall or curled up with a bunch with five of them. Um, it's warm in here. The fire is just now dying down as the embers and the smoke uh, f- fly out of the flue in the top of the ceiling. In this this basement-like feel, the cellar that it has that once was supposed to hold five, maybe six of these children when they needed it, now holds all of them. They all f- are afraid. And some of them, you wake up and are clinging to you in different parts of your limbs. Uh, whether it be for warmth or comfort, you're not sure. But you begin to stir. Um, they don't. They're exhausted. They're alive. They're fine. They're breathing. But they're exhausted. One by one, you wake up, you make eye contact with each other across the room. There's just this kind of grim realization of that wasn't a dream. That had to happen. That actually happened. Jason was over in the corner <clears throat> tinkering on Conk. <clears throat> he got beat up quite a bit yesterday, so... Uh, we're going to make sure he's in full working order. Also, okay. just to clarify, so you don't call me out on it later, <laughs> my infusions. Yes. I have my new repulsive shield mm-hmm. that I carved out last time. Um, I have my repeating shot on the crossbow. Mm-hmm. And bag of Got it. And I attuned to the Viper Kopesh. I will post those when I have them up. Um, I can say that in your in your um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In your preoccupation to keep yourself buried in your work, mm-hmm. one of the things you did was take the time to ritually identify the items that you had found. Yes, uh, the beard. The shield, and we got the lightning kopesh as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, the lightning kopesh, the beard, and the sh- targe of heroic tales. I believe mm-hmm. we picked up as well. The leather beard, yeah. Okay, so you have those items identified. Um, can a gnome grow a beard? No one can grow a beard, right? Possibly. It's one way to find out. Was <laughs> <laughs> um, it made out of leather? Have I ever had to shave before? Um, there are times you wish you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, have, you have old whiskers here every once in a while. The, your Still father young. has this like kind of uh, Van Dyke goatee. Okay. Um, so got to fit in with the dwarves, right? Right. Grow what you can. So, what what infusion did you drop or? In order to get in the repulsor shield, uh, I had so my weapon. Mm-hmm. I was swapping that back and forth between the crossbow and the mace that I made. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just dropped the mace. At level six, I get a third infusion. Oh, okay, so you just got another one. I just, just got a new This is one. your first rest since yes. being able to get it. Correct. Understand. So yeah, you um, <clears throat> you do some last minute etching and like cantrip magic focusing intent of, uh, and then you like. Fl- finally put the last bit of the power source in the back of the shield and kind of flip a switch and you hear so I sent you like that a particle accelerator around the uh, shield I sent you that little sketch yes. right of yes, what, of I the, to look what like. the arcane runes look like yeah. yes so yeah. it's five shields kind of in a circle and then mm-hmm. springs sort of like sun bursting out of the top of each shield so represent defense and repulsion yep so that's back. Repulsive effect, I have four charges. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the fifth shield is for my actual shield spell. I can. That's how I cast, like how I activate. Uh, you just the use the sh- your actual shield as a conduit to. Correct. I understand. So 
it sort of glows with how many charges I have left. Ah, uh, so each shield glow. Uh, I get it. Cool. So the nice. bottom four glow, and the top one is, if I need to use it's the shield, battery life indicator, I can. Yep. <laughs> I can throw my energy into that fifth shield and get the emergency. Guys, I love artificer spell. magic. It's so cool. I love how it's like magitech. It's yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Uh, cool. I love that term, magitech. I'm gonna keep it. Um, cool. Um, Zemdak, you're doing that. You're kind of involved at the moment. Um, the rest of you notice that Zemdak is yet again burying himself in his work to avoid dealing with his feelings. I can fix this. <laughs> I can fix this. You, you had seen me. You probably hear him because he's the first one you make eye contact in the morning. Okay. And you probably hear the just, I can fix this. I can fix this. See, Cole, Cole's kind of dealing with his stuff the same way, mm -hmm. and but as a performer and a musician Cole's actually pulling out his notebook and his lute and he's actually starting to work on like trying to turn his emotions into a song Ah, so like a lament yes so he, he's taking you, you hear the occasional stuff and everything like that and eventually you hear him just kind of mutter the first two word, first two lines of the song and it's a grim darkness fell on Keradim heard were undead cries and terror screams Nice. Wonderful start. Um, do you have a title for this yet? Or mm -hmm. you're still working on it? Great. So Cole works on his lament of the tragedy of Caradine. Um, no better bard to compose such a piece other than one that experienced it firsthand. Um, Cole, you start to realize that shit, this is what the bards of old did. This is why the Bardic College is there. It's a little bit more commercialized now, but you going into it, you were like, yeah, I'm going to be a bard. It's going to be fucking rainbows and, and, and gumdrops and cupcakes, and it's going to be great. And I'm going to tell the beautiful stories of like us vanquishing monsters. And you're starting the reality of I had to tell the horrible stories, too. And Cole's going to even have that realization with his being about how important it is because everything with security for he's not sure how to write that in or anything like that but mm -hmm. he now realizes why they have that immunity mm -hmm. is to tell the stories that are really bad like this and where does that line for you mean where does politics begin and the truth end and where does where do you as the reporter decide where you draw that what kind of information do you want to be available to the public? How could that affect international policy? How could that affect national politics, foreign policy, a bunch of things? You realize that there is power within words, power within songs. The power of information is... That's how wars are won and lost, it occurs to you. Who has the most information? And you just linger on that thought for a moment as you see the words before you, realizing that each one of these letters of this song is a king in their own right. The rest of you stir and muster and awake um, to the bittersweet and yet pleasant sounds, it's a little redundant, um, of soft strumming and a melodic voice you recognize as one of your companions. I'll probably be the last one to wake up because you'll see that like I have my spell book open and like just furious scribbles on it and just like it clearly fell asleep as I was trying to figure out how to <coughs> slow down time and, and so we could have maybe <coughs> stopped Emrys. Um, so my mouth is just a gape. <laughs> and like, you know paw twitching every now and again. Not the first time Cole has caught you like that. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> oh, okay. It's oh, a nice song, Cole. Very sad, but um, it's better. It's not a bad way to wake up in the morning. It's what we just had to deal with was sad. I don't know what else to do with this. Yeah, no, it's all right. It makes sense. 
Yep. Log is probably still in his wolf form, curled up, and probably still has a bunch of kids sleeping on him. Oh, and yeah. It, yeah. And, you know, like when if you ever had a cat or a small dog, and like you're just ready to get up, and then all of a sudden it like, gets on you. Now you can't. You're stuck there. That, that's basically Log right now. It's just kind of he doesn't want to disturb the kids and get himself up in doing so. <laughs> you just see Log's eyes like twitching. Eyes yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. As he's just laying there. Yeah, I'm just imagining like only your snout and like your eyes like out of you know <laughs> visible outside this this dog pile. You, you know when your dog's like laying there and you talk to him and your dog doesn't want to get up yet, but it's doing that and you just see the eyes moving back and forth as it like keeps right. looking at you. That's what I'm picturing with Log right now. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Terry's the second. Second of High Lock, yes. So. The heart, should, we should be able to see if the heart recharges tomorrow, just for, for that. Um, all right. Yes, today is the second of I Mark um, As you're furiously writing your notes and you have Lammy before you, um, trying to make sense of the universe and giving it an argument that is... Um, you feel like a, uh, you feel like a, a lawyer who is like setting up their cross examinations. Except the, the uh, defendant, uh, um, attorney is the universe itself. Right. And you come up with one, a way to have time, be. not so strong in one area or have some sort of dilation on a certain area of certain creatures and you come up with the slow spell. TJ is handing me a cool printed spell scroll, guys, for those that can't see it. It's very cool. It's like a... um, I don't think I'll ever share these. I think this is just for us. They're they're pretty (laughs) nifty. Oh, He does this for each of her spells. Yeah, She has a whole actual binder full of these. Yeah, and every one of them is awesome, but I think I like this one the best so far. This is awesome, dude. Great job. Little clock Um, and, and like, waves kind of patterns. You also remember what you did to teleport the body of the detonating uh, um, Infantry 9 away to help prevent... Uh, and the rocks during the And blast. the rocks, that's correct. Well, that was Pulse. That was Pulse. Oh. Um, um, and you, like, draw mathematical insignias of, like, Psi, Pi, Omicron, of Greek symbols and all these other arcane and draconic symbols and realize, like, it's just math. Mm-hmm. If I can do it myself, why can't I do it to somebody else? It's just imposing my will upon somebody else. But it's not an ability that I've found here. It is, like, finding the hack for going faster than the speed of light, but rather than that, it's just by putting a teleportation spot in a different area and causing whoever's there to have a small singularity, a wormhole, suck them to a different spot, and you come up with vortex warp. Granted, you also realize that the universe is unhappy with this. (laughs) It doesn't like this, and the universe has a, a couple stipulations when it comes to this, meaning like, oh, you don't get to mess with matter and space too much. You have at least have to put whatever you're moving into a place where it will be stable, right. or that you can see. Right, right. I get your argument, universe. Fine, I'll play by your rules. But you know, I, I think I think yeah, this all like, makes sense. There was definitely some back and forth <laughs> as to like, okay, what kind of settlement do we have to agree on this? Mm-hmm. I promise I won't go too far either. Yeah. All right. Fine. Awesome. So I finish and. TJ handed out another super cool s- scroll um, with a little guy in like this gate. It's, it looks almost like an iris um, for an eye. Um, and I finished figuring out both those scrolls mm-hmm. this morning. So you now can insert those into your spell book. Yay. Thank you. There's a. I really like that artwork. From yeah, that one. I was like the the actual artwork, the canon artwork in the Strixhaven book for Vortex work was just too. Apt. I had to just take so, it. So, that's actually, there's a whole, one of their schools. Yeah, that's the colleges. school with, like, the, the nature it's and Nature math. Fractal. Yeah, yeah, Nature Fractal, yeah. And I really, really liked it, so it just worked really well with the spells <coughs> that I threw in there. Um, you also matches. notice that in the, um, sorry guys, if you're watching this, this is just for us, sorry. Uh, 
Um, we have to have our little little secrets every once in a while. It in a watermark on the back of each one of these, uh, or not in the back, but uh, uh, in the background of each one of these is actually the circle of magic that relates to the school of magic that this is. For example, this is conjuration magic. So there is a conjuration circle, you know, as a watermark in the back of each one of those. Each yeah. one of these these scrolls have them. Not all of them, especially for ones that the image takes up the entire page, like Tasha's hideous laughter for that. Um, but good 80 to 90 percent of them have that. <laughs> right, and at least the colors of all of these scrolls correspond to mm -hmm. that school of magic. Not so. only that, these are actual real Wiccan s s scroll like uh, circles that that are used in like today witchcraft. Uh, contemporary religions or, or that kind of sex and real covens, they actually do... So there is uh, an argument to be said that there might be some actual power behind these actual female scrolls. Um, we like to get into it, guys. We're not appropriating anyone's culture. We're just having fun. <laughs> um, cool. So, Log, you lift the child off of you or are you just going to lay there and, and like gonna, a cat until he wakes okay. up oh, yeah I'm just like I'm just waiting there basically until like okay I can't hold it anymore now I gotta go <laughs> <laughs> right it's like uh, I, I'm sorry I can't move I have a dog sleeping on my chest I, I guess I die here right um, you're like, shit I really have to pee I have to get up um, great so all of you are now awake you noticed on the ground you noticed that two people are missing Safka and Argus Anybody uh, seen Safka or Argus this morning? I haven't seen Argus since we finished our job last night. Okay. But he did come down here, right? Or yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought I saw him. I, I, I mean, I was blurry eyed, right, so I don't, I don't know. But like, okay. As long yeah, as he was behind me when we came down, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you? You guys haven't seen him either? Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen him since we got here. I don't think. Oh, well, I tried to get him to shoot that paper ball, but he didn't. Yeah. He seemed distracted, but I don't think he would just disappear. Right. Mm, yeah, that was after we finished doing what we needed to do, so I don't blame him for being distracted. Yeah. Also, Cole, looking around, you see that the children that had undergone such a horrific experience. Well, horrific is, I guess, a point of contention as far as what what perspective you're actually looking at it, because you did save their lives. They don't appear to be uncomfortable. They're sleeping soundly. They're all breathing. They appear to be okay. Bandages are holding. They are clean still. Um, the cauterizing went well and clean. It was very well done. Um, um, you look around. You're trained in medicine, correct? Yes. Go ahead and roll a medicine check. All right. So as ever, so as my partner, my companions know, but you guys don't. I tend to like roll crappy every other session. So we'll see how this goes today. Nice. Right, Sixteen. Sixteen. Um, you just take a quick look and examine these eight um, children. No signs of infection, which is great. Um, no sepsis, no infection. This is great. That means the cleaning and the cauterizing of the wounds went well because there's no growing bacteria. Um, this is a great sign for um, the healing over of that portion. So uh, the only thing that it, the only time will tell now to see if there's any problem with the, the, the muscular and tendons that were severed. Other than that, everything looks good. And they're still fast asleep. Trishani also burned the last of her spell slots last night on berries. Mm -hmm. So everybody should have... Yeah, there are plenty of berries. ...a berry today that... I mean, that'll we'll heal them. last for 20 hours? No, we'll last for 16... Because six, you slept for 8 six, hours, yeah. so it should yeah. last for 16 hours. hours yeah. mm -hmm. So at any point today, they can eat one of those, and it would, like, re-cleanse them. That yeah, it would just... It would fill them for the day. Yeah. Like the, the code, <clears throat> it would give them all the nutrients they need to stay healthy and rest and help recuperate in the mo in, in a conventional manner um it's better than hospital food um, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh, no offense hospitals but i mean also, magical berries come on, come on you know they, like they know it's true yeah, you know who you are <laughs> um you know what you've done, <laughs> you know what you've done. <laughs> but that's a good point i still cast it again twice i give it to our group 
and I give the excess to Miladonna because I know it will last until tomorrow. Miladonna's well. not here. Wait, Mi- Miladonna? Here, let me try this. And I take out my my copper wire bracelet and point to where he usually sleeps upstairs, or they usually sleep. Sorry. What's the range on that? 120 feet. Okay. Um, he's sitting on the roof right above where his room is. So he just goes through the building. What does it say what it can go through? I think it's like a foot of wood or something, right? It's something like that. A, a thin sheet of, of an inch of steel a or an inch of iron or steel, a, a thin sheet of lead, a, a foot of wood. You can you can cast it if you are familiar with the target and know it is beyond the barrier. Uh, oh. So magical silence, one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, three feet of wood blocks the spell. So... Yeah, I'd say the the floor and the roof don't really have more than that type of input. Yeah, go ahead. Very end of it, though, is the spell doesn't have to follow a straight line. It can travel freely around corners and through openings. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's the very last line on the spell. Oh, wow. <laughs> really so what a like, winding little little thing. So as long as it takes a path that is no more than 120 feet, if it can go through openings, it goes there. Yeah. Um, you just kind of have to give it a vague direction. Yeah. Granted, if you point over there, you're not going to send a message to somebody. Right. right. No. Sorry. Yeah, I'd say like maybe like you got like a 30 degree difference of like you know error there before it starts being okay right. I have to like, put some limits here like oh, yeah. a frisbee like you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, like a little bank left right. a little bank right yeah <laughs> awesome cool um yeah um um you see um um as you're again basking breathing in the moment Miladonna's ears perk up and he just says um, yes we are just enjoying the sunrise I'll, I'll be down in a moment Okay, great. I point back up. <laughs> Just let him. It appears that your companions have awoken. Well, um, I probably should go. I don't know what we're doing. Neither do I. Yeah. But we try our best. Yeah. Um, I will see if I can whip up something. Perhaps I have some components that could be used for food to feed these children um, as you converse with your companions. Shall we head down then? Yeah. Just be careful. Yeah. We start to head back down. You start to hear some scuffle and huff. Um, Go ahead, roll perception check for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, Safka. That is a 13. 13. You notice that there is a rolled up piece of paper sticking out of Milodon's pocket, coat pocket. Um, that wasn't there the last time you saw it, but I mean, he's an alchemy, so it could, could be anything. I just leave it. Okay. You leave it. <coughs> Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Uh, Zemdek uh, <laughs> drinks a little uh, some of the soup that has been li- been left out a little bit too long. <laughs> <Turns out. laughs> and I finally realize, oh, it's morning. Everybody's awake. <laughs> Should probably come back to be Reality. social. Mm. <laughs> um, Zemdek, do you still have some of that booze you took? <sighs> um, yeah. Can I have some for breakfast? Sure. It's been a long night. What, like a gnomish coffee? What do you give me? Give you a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the rock gut from Gut Buster. Yes. Oh. Oh, so this well. is like bottom shelf ale, watered down. Cole doesn't care this morning. Yeah. Um, so uh, you eventually hear the sounds of scuffles going on up. Uh, Mel dances after you as you head back down the trap door into basement. Oh, no, that was from... Follows you down. Pet of, they follow you the down. The pit of... Uh, yeah. yeah. Pit of pain. Pine of blood. Yeah. Pine of blood. Yeah, Rock was from Pine of Blood. The yeah. good stuff was from Gut Buster. I thought you got some bottles of wine from the gut, the the Pine of Blood as well. But it was like he, he, well, no, he basically walked up to the bottom oh, shelf and just just yeah. right into the bag of holding. Yeah, what is, I got what like, is it called? <laughs> uh, uh, um, um, the sweep. grocery the grocery street sweeper. What is it called? That the sweepstakes. The one where they, they give you a big cart and supermarket you have to go. Sweep. Supermarket oh, sweep. Man, that's that what it's called. That was good. That was I, love the, I love the new version of it. It is awesome. One it of my favorite shows. Is it a new version? Yes, Leslie Jones is the host. 
Oh, <laughs> it is on their second season. My wife and I watch it constantly. It is fucking awesome. I haven't watched actual broadcast TV in years. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's on Hulu. Like We watch the reruns on Hulu all the time since we don't have cables. So. I took some crap from there, but then we went to the Gut Buster. And we broke into the Gut Buster room. We broke room into the back room, too. and I got two casks of Gut Buster and a couple of bottles of the good stuff. It's like pretty much straight up poison. Yes. Um... Like, if you wanted to do it, you could coat your weapons in it and you do a d6 of poison. <laughs> um, okay. Make a constitution. <laughs> <laughs> you start vomiting unexplainably. Right. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I mean, Cole definitely fountained after the gut buster, so... Oh, for sure he did. Yeah. Um, okay. Has anyone seen Argus? Oh, you asked me that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you seemed a little involved with your work, so I, I totally get it. But uh... are you back down yet? You or Miladonath and oh, yes, Miladonath and them are back down. Have either of you guys seen the dwarf? No. Oh. I thought he was. Did Miladonis I s- just... did I see him before I when I woke up? No. Oh, he 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 was gone when we went up to the roof. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it says he's taking some time to sort some things out. He left me this. And he hands it to you, Sokka. What? It's loud. Do you want me to read it? If you want, it's up to you. It's actual physical scroll for those that can't see this. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool. a real physical scroll that he just handed over to him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Safka can read that good. Like, looking, thinking about her backstory, she probably... How, what's your intelligence score? It's, um, like, her intelligence is 14, but... 14, you can read common. Uh, yeah, but, like, she never was tall. Because she's uh, an orphan and stuff like that. He's yeah. Oh, well, you were taught to, to read common in at the Dwarfenage, oh, for okay, sure. Okay, okay. Um, because uh, if... Like you were slapped on the wrist several times if you did weren't able to read, okay. because um, there were times where you were forced to like go through menial labor of like reading stuff so that the people of the dwarfenage didn't have to like you. They they pretty much let the let the orphans do their own paperwork because okay. they didn't want to. It was like they made you do labor. Okay, okay. Um, what's your face for Mary? That's so. That's... <laughs> Um, Milodonath, I'm writing this letter because I, I don't think that I can get all of these words out without erupting with emotion. What we have accomplished is the best this past day was horrific and yet necessary. That someone would treat so many innocent souls like tinder for their own Sorry. <laughs> For their own selfish goals scares me. Scare. Uh, whoa, sorry. <laughs> scares. Oh, s- with an essence of rage. It becomes. It's because of you that I can focus this burning inferno of anger on the person and not the race every day. You invited my burning. You ignited my burning knowledge that carried or wicked that caring or wicked people can come from any race any age gender or being the coals of light or wickedness can be started or quenched by anyone or anything stereotypes are learned behavior that should never be directed by their fire yet turn without looking at the tinder they are use they use alone that's where we go to find the true fire of their character most of my life i've been hidden where my flame of borrow comes from i want you to know that every that to every forge where you turn however whoa sorry <laughs> Uh, that's your true borrow burns. 
the kindness and compassion and love you show for these children brave to me that you are a true light to the world and deserve to burn bright as a star don't let any corruption of the blazer blaze smother you or bat out your soul you are doing divine work and these souls you protect are better off because of you i can if i can ever find a way to restore these children i will come back let this flame burn bright in your life and cleanse your soul of darkness let his fire devour your enemies from the ashes you bring forth in life argus firebeard cleric of kosuth Kosuth. Uh, so he left? Well, but it doesn't say why he left. He mm. said he was taking some time. Oh. Okay. I so, don't think he yeah. abandoned you. I think he's just... Taking a moment. Mm. Needs some breathing room for a moment. Would he go back to the flame, potentially? I feel like that kind of makes sense. Um, but maybe from afar, just so that he's not implicated in any, in any other, you know. You don't have to by yourself, really. No. But I am sure that he's somewhere near a fire right now and probably just, you know, in his thoughts. Should, should we try and find him? I, I think it's... Maybe we can try to find him, but be gentle about it, or just see if he's okay, you know, that kind of thing. Or do we let him wait for a little while and see if we can find more of Eleazar? We, we, we know that he's coming back to us on his own. We want to tr- try to find more for that lost lamb? Right. We would at the very least have to let him know if we were to leave Miladonis, so yes. Like, I feel like otherwise he might still come back here and then we'd be gone and it'd, it'd be hard for him to find us we'd, again. We'd have to leave, like, a note or something, because he's the one that can actually, like, contact everybody else, like, when we're not, when they're not around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe we leave a note. Yeah. Where do we want to meet him at, then, though? That is a good question. I mean, water is going to be a uh, common place that uh, won't draw too much attention, nor if, you know, thinking through the time of everything, if there are people that are starting to get affected by the fights. Um, I just want to make sure that we're cognizant of that. Well, he might enjoy that, though. He'd get to burn a lot of things, then. That's true. It could be very cathartic. Right? Yeah. I know that I'm. I, I I need to like do some things based on everything. Yeah. Right now. I I do not blame anybody for for that. I blame Emerus. That's the only person that I I blame at the moment, honestly. Not that he didn't like him. I really don't like him now. I mean, like, uh, there's part of me that really admires his brilliance with some of the things that he's done, but he's using these tools in such a terrible way. Thank you. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like, I, I'm, I'm torn. I want to have a conversation with him, maybe learn some things, but at the same time, he's just, he, this is unacceptable. And the fact that he has hurt so many innocents and, and, is now threatening our families and, and whatnot. It's not okay. Uh, with the mention of family, Cole's actually going to grab at his wrist and go, Wait, has anybody seen a bracelet? It's uh, green and purple and had a little black stone on it. Oh, um, I don't... You, that Do you that log jogs your memory. You've seen him wear it before. You haven't seen it recently on him. Yeah. When was the last time you remember having it? Uh, before the gut bluster. And then I woke up mm-hmm. and you guys had my bean and yep, yep, yep. that was a big worry. And then we did a lot of other things. And When you passed out, the crowd did tear at your clothing. I do remember waking up naked. I saved your <laughs> loot. 
but that was about the only thing I could get. It may have been taken as a souvenir. Before you killed somebody, right? <laughs> no, you saved my other stuff. You, you kept my gear, but like anything that was potentially clothing, I lost. Um, yeah. That's why tasers are less lethal and not non-lethal. I I tased someone to death. He did. Yeah. Especially <laughs> people that have pre-existing conditions. That's the whole thing. Right. It's one of the reasons why they're I think they're illegal in New York. They just don't right. Work. That's right. They, did, yep. they can't have they have them there. Yep. New York City. Would Sokka um, have seen this bracelet? Mm. No, you entered cold. the party after it had already gone missing. So, so no. if you I saw know. it, you saw it with whoever stole it, kind of thing. Have I seen it? <laughs> Can I roll a roll a luck check for me? Okay, <laughs> that's a seventeen. Seventeen. Cole, describe it a little bit more. Um, so it's kind of a turquoise. Uh, Actually, Cole will pull out his old rapier. The The cord looks like this, and he points at the handle of his rapier. Um, this used to be a matching necklace with it before. I learned a lesson from my teacher. And it had a black uh, stone on it that my sister had carved. It wasn't worth anything, but it was a symbol that she thought would protect me. With that... Do I remember anything as I was seeing it? Um, you've seen a assortment of jewelry and paraphernalia and adornments that have been stolen or acquired or requisitioned by the urchins that they then pawn off to fences in order to get a meager allowance for food, clothing, other supplies. Um, this sounds similar to a lot of things that you've seen before, uh, but as far as like a dead on, oh, I remember exactly seeing that. It escapes you. Well, I mean, one. Th- so, when I was a kid, I used to steal shit, but I mean, like, people like probably pawned it. Yeah. Um, it didn't appear much, but it, it was an onyx stone. It would have been worth a little bit of money. Um, it was more important to me just because it was from my sister. I, I mean, so It also belonged to Cole, the first human to finish the gut buster. So that's very true. Here in town, it may have had more worth intrinsically mm-hmm. than it does it's like, yeah, monetarily. Do you put the baseball you you got from the Grand Slam from the World Series up on eBay or do you keep it? Yeah. Depends on who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's worth looking at a pawn shop if that's something We just raided kind of. the pawn shop. Oh yeah. It was more like a everything kind of shop. You know, like... That's a, what I mean, we could, we could always go back and see if the blind guy got away from the zombies. I think going out on the streets is not a good idea. No. I agree. I think it's, yeah. I'd only go up there if that's where we think Argus is. Which, given that he doesn't know the underground as much as you do, Sokka, I would imagine that he probably would, right? I mean, he's a dwarf, though. True, but just not the city as well. Unless he, I don't know. Well, that's not, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but... It, Is it really important? Um, to me it is. If we can find it, I, it's been several days. I mean, the hope of me finding it is kind of gone right now. But. If only we had someone with locate object. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a break at the moment. <laughs> Could also be on the wrist of someone, of some zombie in a ditch somewhere. Right. Wait, no, I didn't prepare it. Sorry, mm-hmm. Elise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys prepared your spells before we started today, right? Yeah. We can certainly keep an eye out for it, though. I think. If we can, it's. Yeah, of course. Um, 
So yeah, let's we'll keep an eye out for it. So what do we do? Okay, so what do we do? Do we... Assuming that Argus actually comes back to us, or we go out and find him, or we do something else in the meantime, are we going to run and try to go to the nearest of our families? Or are we going to try to help these people and at least tell them, like, what we know about this in some some manner? Don't know. Does anyone have someone that they can run to that could help? Soft go patron? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that good of a sound. Okay, great. I, I mean, mean, I figured. But... My master was working with Emrys, so he wouldn't be any aid. Right. I, I have enough. The Bardic College, maybe? Maybe, but I'd need a way to reach my master, and I don't have a way to do that without sending a message that will take half a year, maybe more, to get back to us. True. Uh, I and think... I've had no contact with my family for years now. Okay. Selfishly, I really just want to go and make sure they're all right. He seemed fixated on me a little bit there, and he sent me a message directly. That's true. I mean... I'm, I'm afraid he's fixated on me being his enemy. I think we're all his enemies now. Except for you. You are hidden, Safka. You're, I think you might be okay. Well, Safka looks at the ground and goes, he's my enemy. I, Agreed. My family well, doesn't really have means, so... They would be easy, easy targets for him. Okay. Are they, um... You don't have to say the name, but have they... Do you have a different name, at least, that might be protecting... Like, does he know you as something different than what they are, so that would help protect them, or no? No. And if he went looking for the Flint Sweeper Gnome family, they wouldn't be that hard to find. They're okay. kind of odd. They stand out. <laughs> we, uh... We have a mine, mm -hmm. which is usually more of a dwarven tradition. Oh, okay. So anyone looking for that family in Thulmore Bed, it would stand out. Understood. I am worried that he can automatic like, he's clearly demonstrated that he can teleport, you know, uh, to different places, and I'm worried that he knows more places. That he Didn't you tell us in. you saw him in Thulmore Bed? Yeah, so sorry. he can get to that city easily. He's, he might already be there, honestly. Especially now that he's made that declaration. That exchange, by the way, that you witnessed was traumatizing. For what he did. He... I think... Zavka kind of pauses. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I think he's more powerful than he's shown us. He... He, dis he disintegrated someone. What? I'm sorry. Ha what? Like, I, like this is blowing Machini's mind right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there was a man he was talking to mm -hmm. about a plan, and then I looked up and there was a flash, and the man was dust. So literally disintegrated. That makes me wonder how oh. much of a pain we actually are to him. If he can just disintegrate problems and he's leaving us around, is he maybe using us for something too? It's possible. It's also possible that if um, he wasn't expecting it, I assume that he's somewhat similar to how I, you know, prepare spells. Maybe he just didn't have that spell that he did, you know, a couple days ago. But it's that's still terrifying that he knows how to just automatically kill somebody and turn them into dust. Your memory harkens back to your first encounter, where he was like, sit, let's talk. Right. Would you like some tea? He didn't consider you a threat. Mm -hmm. We have pissed him off twice now, though, and yet it feels like... He used to be rather patient, too, for how much, how, how much of a thorn you've been in his side. He didn't proclaim that you were an enemy of him until... I threatened. Until you made yourself one. Also, Safka, you remember the robes that this person was wearing. These red robes. He... Similar to... Yeah. He was... He, he 
he was wearing a robe. Well, the person just he the, disintegrated. The attire. The, was the disintegrated person? No. Mm-hmm. The, dis- the one who was dust. He uh, mm-hmm. was wearing a red robe, but maybe... Maybe it was like... The entire attire was crimson. It was red. all red. Like, everything was red. Like, it looked like he belonged to some sort of organization. Maybe the Red Lion Syndicate, but maybe not. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't know they were a thing until you told me, so I just assumed they were the ones. Yeah. And she kind of trails off. Okay. So, so he's working with them, but he also killed them? Maybe Using them? Maybe somebody fucked up and that's what yeah, happened. It wasn't what it sounded like. No? It sounded like he was a threat? No. Yeah. It sounded like he didn't want evidence. But okay. he was talking to the man like the man they were was, working together? Yeah, and like he didn't want s- someone to know something. So he got rid of it. Yeah. Roll an intelligence check for me. See if you can remember a little more of the specifics of this. Uh, that's a 15. 15. Okay. What you remember is that they were having some sort of clandestine meeting. Like, they were definitely off the beaten path and having, like, an update on how, how it's going so far. The specifics um, of um, of what they were speaking of was something around this Cockney accent coming from this supposed Red Lion Syndicate member being um, everything is in place. We're ready to ship out east on a moment's notice as per instructions. Yada, yada, yada. Sleepers are fully embedded. A monkey could run this show now. It's foolproof. And then the, the host said something like, never underestimate the incompetency of fools. Nothing that we can control will be left to chance, including you. Poof. Yeah. There was more to that conversation, but you don't remember all of it. Okay. And you said you were in Thormor bed at this point when this happened? I was, right? Okay. I mean, how long ago was that? you think? A couple years? Time passes. Underground. Time's a bit weird. weird. Okay, so it's, it's a little wonky. Days are less. Anywhere between a little less than a year to a couple years, somewhere around there. Yeah. Especially deep underground. Days are sort of when you sleep. Yeah, like... Okay. Um, long enough for that. at least one... <laughs> Seasons, one set of seasons to pass. So, okay. you know, at least one year. Probably. Okay. Could be longer, could be, you know, hard okay. to tell. I mean, that does. I, and we've talked about it. J- Jives was at his timeline that, you know, before, and if he's had some sort of um, event at the, against the council so of, you know, the Golden Sun, basically. So. Using the red line to set up some sort of sleeper organization. Removing the one who set it up mm-hmm. so no one could find out about it. But he's got plans all over the place. Plans, plans. Alright. So it, it's not impossible that he really is using us. Yeah. He did seem surprised, though, when he found us in his home. We may have just been... He may have just set this up to use whatever... Whoever first showed up there. You know, he was never pissed off... Goodberry wine. Yeah, he was never pissed off that they took his his lab notebook or his spell book. Could have been a fishing lure. Yeah. To get some group 
we were just the group right that bit the hook right and the fact that like I would be Pernua Pernua even she could have been acting I mean if you guys want to roll a collective insight check based on all of your experiences with Pernua so far you can kind of like a retroactive looking back on it mm-hmm. yeah 25. 25. Can anybody else beat that? Nope. Does anybody else get above 20? No. What'd you get? 21. 21. Safka, 21. Cole, 25. Safka, you didn't really spend enough time with her to really get a true gauge on her from what before. What you could get seemed genuine, seemed entirely guided by her rage and her sense for vengeance. Uh, but also was tempered enough to not direct that towards you guys. Uh, the couple, the rest of you have a little bit of your suspicions. I'm like, well, she did stab Argus like six times. <laughs> um, She's also the one that told us about the Maw being his other hideout, which mm-hmm. would have led us directly this direction. It led us to here. Yes. Cool. Mm-hmm. You regain that type of suspicion of at what point could we have ever known if she was under the control of Emrys or whether she was within her her own faculties mm-hmm. unless it was obvious right you do however get the sense that Pernua, her soul, who she is, is still there. And that if it is Pernua herself, she appears to be a good-natured person. I mean, after all, she had very genuine reactions and feelings to her daughter. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it occurs to you that there may have been... I mean, this is all conjecture, of course. It occurs to you that there may have been times where she was allowed to be herself... And times where it almost seemed, almost only seemed like she was. If I think she wasn't just always under his control, but when she was able to be, when he allowed her, mm-hmm. when she was able to be Pernua, she was Pernua. But when she wasn't, I don't know if we can tell the difference. It's also, having said, this is a highly intelligent individual with plans within plans within plans. It would be not outside of the realm of possibility for him to be able to pull something like this off. Right. Granted, you don't know what that means. Right. If, if he did have control of her, that's how he found out who we are. Mm-hmm. And he knows everything about us that we told Pernua, or that she overheard. That's how he learned about who we are. Mm-hmm. Could have done it another way, I guess, but it's an easy way, planting a spy within our group. Yeah, and even if it's an accidental spy for now, right? Like now an that she's there, unwitting spy. Yeah. Perhaps like you can warg into Shakar. He could see or hear through her. Well, or, if he was just waiting for the first group to find that lair, right? We were just. He would want to know more about us then. Right. We made it past. <laughs> past that uh, fire trap, which we barely did. Which <laughs> right to we made it through the like fog that. too. Yeah, and past the spiders. All the spiders, he, yeah. He did talk about. Mm-hmm. So he needs a capable group to do something. What you you think he's grooming you? Guiding, uh, using us as like patsies. You know, plans within plans within plans. All of those <laughs> who are trained in Arcana, please roll an Arcana check. Does that mean me? If you're trained in Arcana. Watch if you're up. proficient in Arcana. No, they're not. Yeah, I, only have <laughs> half, I only have half proficiency yeah, in tra- Arcana. Dirty yeah. 20. Yeah, Jack of all trades does not count. 22. 22, dirty 20, 22. You both understand and recognize the spell that he casted. It's out of your realm of use right now, but you recognize that's Dimension Door. I've seen that, you know, references to such high-level trans- teleportation magic before. You also know one specific thing about that spell, which is unavoidable. If you want to bring someone with you, they got to want to go. They have to be willing. Mm-hmm. 
He did. We have to convince them. He did entreat her rage if she wanted. Right. So you don't know it, where this is. Again, it, it's in this, it's inconclusive, right? It could be, it could not be. But someone with that level of ability that's been planning for as long as he's been planning. I agree. If we find Pernua again, maybe we handle her with more kid gloves than we have before. Perhaps. I mean, she did. I mean, that was right there. She did seem like she still wanted to kill him at that uh, time. But yeah, that's hard to act. Yeah. But, yeah. So I mean, maybe, maybe she's in not in control a... of her when she kept stabbing Argus. You know? right. and, and Possibly, the, the like everyone to know. As well. Um, what does that make her? Does that make her an enemy? Because she's still trapped. Right. Yeah. I mean, she saved my life a couple times. You know. She's still not necessarily willing. She's helping him out. <laughs> she could be an unwilling victim still, just like we are. Has Cole Even ever so. heard of anything like that in his stories or anything like that? Of somebody of, being able, of what? Of like somebody being able to like control somebody unwittingly and stuff like that, where the target, where the person doesn't know. Go ahead and roll, roll a history check for me. Well, I mean, I'm not a cleric, so never mind. I don't even know those spells. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, you know of one uh, silly uh, folklore of a demigod who was um, tricked into going mad and uh, killing his own children, and then the god who was his mother forced him to reconcile by going through a bunch of, of tasks to, uh, to like, um, re... Um, what's the word? Um, reconcile. His... Reconcile, but also... Um, oh, I know. Redeem. It's redeem no... himself. Yeah, there's another one for it, too. Redeem himself. Um, and to, like, regain his status. And it, but it again, kind of acts of attrition kind of thing. An acts of, acts of attrition. And then those who deigned them not wanting to regain their status after they finished their task caused them to go mad again and do it again. So it is I mean, as far as folklore is concerned, it's I mean, there's stories of it. Um, there's also as in the realm of magic, you imagine there's possible. probably a possibility for something like that. I mean, crap, you have spells like Charm Person. Suggestion. Suggestion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know minor versions of that. I as far as your suggestion, that was great. Distance, <laughs> strength, power, and um, charm. I mean, there's charm magic. There's right. It's just a matter of magnitude charm. at this point. Right. right. There's scrying spells so that you can see and hear at a distance. Well, and he right. would know everything about Pernua. All he would have to do is scry on her, I think, to yep. see what we were doing. Could have left something specific on her so that he could always find it. And she wouldn't have to roll a wisdom saving throw. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he could just force her to, to automatically fail it. If she's enthralled to him in some yeah. way. As she has admitted that she was in the past, where he where he always tended to cheer her on when she fought his control. You also remember specifically the moment where she said, if I ever show signs of him controlling me and there's no way out, take me out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which means that there's still something of her in there. Yeah. That's like, I don't doubt that she's not a willing participant in this scheme. But to my mind, it's making more and more sense that she was planted with us in some way. For some purpose. Why would he want a group? Like, what purpose are we serving? He could be feeding us towards his plan and having us do it. We could even be deli delivering the package to him that he wants with us carrying it around like that. Don't look at me. I think he was... <laughs> he I wasn't, was... but I was looking across and you happened to look up at that second. <laughs> I wonder if he actually put, uh, you know, Tortesi there himself a couple of years ago until he could figure out more to, you know, how to resurrect him, right? So I don't think... He... I think he thought that he was fine and safe there, and the fact that we even have him is our only beverage at this point. I, well, I can't see him planning for that 
stupid Carter drinking from the wine and us having to go to that <laughs> place. It's entirely possible he did. He's if he's doing if he's as smart as we think he are he is with this and he's using us. He very well could have planned it that way. I think that that halfling could have been a sleeper. True, but he did. Um, I don't know. I just the emotion that we saw when, and he had the emotion. I think you know when we when Argus threatens the bag, basically. Or, or Zendak. I don't know. We were in the midst of battle, sorry. Yeah. Zendak, um, go ahead and roll a, 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 a retro active insight check from that moment. Ten. Ten. <laughs> seemed pretty angry. I'm not good at people. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed pretty intent and angry. That's about yeah. all you get from it. You, you understand the machines, man. You got those down. Um, it just seems like there's too many coincidences. Mm-hmm. For it not, for him not to be, I mean, random chance that we find his cavern, random chance that we find Tortese's tomb, random chance that we we're in this city the same time that he attacks, random chance. Random chance Eleazar gets taken by security four and then gets snagged by... Spy him. Mm-hmm. Random chance that Aelin asked us to find her mother and bring her back. There's just a lot of coincidences if, if it wasn't. She did seem genuine, though. She yeah, was just yeah, yeah. a daughter that was worried about right. her mother. Right, but... The, the fact that we stumbled upon her daughter who asked us to go find her and we found her with him. Oh, you're saying like, yes. oh, he specifically said, oh, this person's going to be missed. Someone's going to be looking for this person. I understand. There's there's just a lot of coincidences here that seem to be adding up. I'm not saying that that can't be a real thing, but there's just so much coincidence here. It's hard to imagine that he's not working, pulling stones behind something. So can we proactively try to see what he's, other than, you know, obviously his love in the bag, um, try to see what his purpose is with us, if that's the case, right? Like, if if we are to be, be beyond being couriers, which I would imagine that we can't, we can't just be that. No, there's um, something bigger than just that. Right. Here's the question. Do we follow the trail of breadcrumbs that he's leaving for us, or do we go... Strike out randomly on some tiny little bit of information that we've gleaned from the notebook that hasn't meant much before. Just I, see. He knows everything. I can't that. not check on my family. I would, I would like to check on mine. Did, if you guys, yours is the most far away by far. You're way up north, right? Yeah, I'm, but I mean, I'm at moms the, in Sarn Lu, which is also. I'm at the tip of the Razor Fang Mountains, yeah. pretty like above the tip of the Razor Fang Mountains. So if we went through the mountain range, we could hit Argus and I's family. We could hit yours at the end, and then we could cut over west and hit Sarn Lu to try and find his mother. I'm just worried that. Time. But that, that would, is that is like and right of time. Yeah. That um, wouldn't let us check on anyone that you care about. Right, and and we know Machete can probably handle herself, but. I don't know what other family you have. Well, yeah. if he's not welcome in Sarnlu, then she might. Your mother might be safe. Yeah. Safer than. Well, we yeah. heard about a town in the north disappearing. That could have been my hometown. True. I'm also just worried because my fathers are in in the middle of one of the places of his ire. You know, my boss is absolutely in the crosshairs. I, I think for him. And yet, I think if he's got such an issue with the the council, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the council potentially he he may be in the crosshairs, but not as that may be his the ultimate council? goal as Sorry? opposed Con- to conclave. The conclave. Sorry, conclave. <laughs> <That's what it laughs> thank is. you. Conclave. I, it was a conclave C word, and I couldn't remember golden, what it was. Yeah, of the, the, the coalition of the golden, golden dawn. dawn. Yeah, the golden dawn. The coalition. The coalition of the golden yeah. dawn. He could be not as, he could be not as welcome and that could be more end game than immediate too. I uh, yeah, I mean I agreed, but 
I, I think we could check on the closest families. We can. Of, of course, I think that makes the most sense. Um, I am still worried about the liaison, though, too. He, is, he has been a fantastic compatriot over the last month, month and a half at this point. And, you know, his strength might be something that he might, uh, that the host might want to experiment with. Right? Yeah. Even or even his. If any of the. Sick. Right. If any of the old stories are true and dragons are real, mm-hmm. Eleazar's blood may inherently have some power that he can use. That's a very good point. And we know that they are real given <laughs> what we found. You know, with that giant uh, time space warping dragon bones. Uh, so. uh, isn't. Argus's family, like, fairly close to, because I know they left Thulamore Bed and... Yes, they would be just off the triway if we head towards Thulamore Bed. I believe he said they were somewhere along there. Mm-hmm. Is there anything specific about where he's from that the host might want from there? I mean, he clearly contacted your mentor, so I'm assuming that he would... Yeah, he appreciates... how did he find Master Oros? Right. You said he was a joke, right? Like he, he wasn't he taken was, seriously. The only reason he took me on is because he, no one else wanted to be his student. Mm. My family couldn't pay a very high tuition for him to train me. So he was bottom of the barrel. He had a glow up. <laughs> well, so he obviously got he, he obviously got power from because somewhere. Because of you, or he went after him because he knew this was somebody that wouldn't arouse suspicion if he disappeared. Right, or maybe he sees... In himself, you know, somebody who is an outsider and brilliant and, and you know, uh, just needs that chance and who would be hungry for that chance. Willingly do whatever deal with whatever devil he mm-hmm. had to. Regardless of whether it sounds creepy or sketchy. Mm-hmm. Right. Granted, you imagine that bridge is not entirely intact. Grant, oh yeah, he had abandoned it. Like, he got something he wanted and he dipped out a different direction mm, so totally but the fact that he was interested in in working with somebody that knows about machines like you do them deck i feel like he is not ruling out the possibility of wanting to work with your folks your king so could be could be another target area I'm just, if there's nothing really in Argus's area, maybe we could use that of where his family is. If there's nothing that he might be interested really in there, maybe that's a good place to kind of base ourselves a little bit to at least figure out where we want to go. It's... Anywhere we go, it's going to be a long distance of travel. We did also burn all of his bridges in Sasso. So that could also be a good hideout for us in the future. Mm-hmm. We burned his hideout near there. Purdue yeah, I mean, is now gone. You if he's like teleportation. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I mean, yeah, that teleportation. He can't is, get there as easily anymore. But he, as, well, he may have. He may come. He might come back there. From what you read, as you were telling us, and from what we, and from what he told us. I don't think he's ever going back there. We just kind of made it so he couldn't go back if we needed to. Right. And we destroyed that terrazine piece that he would want to have. He would have wanted to have from there anyway. Mm-hmm. Granted, he did. He has more somewhere, so it's not that big of a deal for him. It seems. Where the? Where do you, where can we find that terrazine? To you specifically, the fact that he seems to have a- any access at all to terrazine. Not he just one piece, curious, but like multiple. Because it is an ex- extremely highly controlled substance for obvious reasons. Right. Yeah. Where so either he has a connection or something, or next time he's stealing it, or I mean, if he has agents, or he found his own, you know, he geo. found his own patch of it, or his connection. One of those setups in Thulmore Bed is getting him Terrazine from the Triumvirate. Right, oh. and that's yeah. I think we. I think that's our biggest lead there too. Besides just, you know. I also, I also think the next time he tries to use Terrazine to take us out, we do our best to grab control of it rather than destroy it if we have the ability. The only thing that contain it can contain it is itself. Is the spent version of it? 
but I so we you have some now. We do. Not enough to make a container out of, though. I thought we did. You have a, a small shard that powers the the diagnostic tool. Yes. Right. And you know how it works. It proliferates itself. So you could yes. make your own cluster. But it is extremely dangerous, especially if you don't know what you We doing. would need enough spent terazine to create a containment device. Right. Well, you what have... The, you have the host using the carrying this around then? Green he's not pulling yes. it out of spent so terazine before he throws it out. If lead was just red yes. enough, you could make spent terazine from it, however... He was saying... Dangerous. If he uses Terrazine against us again, we try to harness it. What I'm or saying is, in order it. to do that, we would need more spent Terrazine right. to well, encapsulate it. And this Which is you the, could make. This is the next point that Cole just brought I up. I could make is... it with the active. Yeah, Terezine because spent ter- cause you remember, you had talked to Argus at length about this, is that the Crystal Brand creates spent Terrazine by letting Terrazine spread and incinerating it <clears throat> until it is mostly spent. It spreads and then they incinerate it until there's uh, also there's only a little bit left and then they let it spread again and they incinerate it until the little bit. Actually just got a really good idea. Granted, it is very dangerous. You need a special like room to do it in so that it doesn't have any chance of escaping because even the dust could if it's like if I mean it, there's a lot of, of variables here. Okay, I have to ask you for about this DM because sure. Cole was the one was the next turn after he threw that terrazine at us last sure, time. Sure, sure. Would Cole have noticed how he pulled it out? Because I don't remember you saying he pulled it out of like spent terrazine. He just pulled it out and threw it. It was at contained us. within a crystal of spent terrazine. Okay, I was just curious and about that. When it that. landed, it shattered. Right, no, no. I was like, I was wondering what he was carrying it in. If he had maybe another type of container that we could figure out or harness to keep it, kind of thing. <laughs> I just had a diabolical idea. Well, do, do that, I'll divulge. <laughs> Your diabolical ideas tend to involve lots of explosions. And what what it caused it to become act will become have contact with something where it could proliferate is that it shattered. Well, yeah, he threw it at us and it shattered onto like the floor in, where in Infantry Nine field. was standing, yeah. and it right. just started spreading. And you imagine also having that terrazine active with that uh, necromantic emitter probably did something else too. I mean, it's it's it acts. It's one of its prime uses is to enhance and catalyze magic. Mm-hmm. Which means he probably used some of it to create the thing. So we are all agreed. When we're done here, mm-hmm. we're trying to go north through the mountains. I think that might be our best course. We can at least. I think that is. I, I don't necessarily want to enter the maw too much if we don't have to. I mean, we'll have to eventually if we are to get to one of his places of fire, right? But at least for now, that might be the easier way, especially. Well, especially because she didn't know exactly where it was in the moth, she just knew it was in the moth. If we could find out more, then maybe go visit that lab. That might be the better way to do it. As we've talked about before, mm-hmm. we just didn't have any more information to go on. Right. So other than waiting for Argus and confirming that Eleazar is not here anymore, is there anything else we need to do here in town? I need more arcane. <laughs> <laughs> where's Ladonna? Where, where, Log, we're yes. at the arcane location. Just talk to Melodonna. <laughs> I could possibly prepare some more for you. Are you sure this is the... Didn't you talk earlier I... about, like, microdosing? Yes, Is I there a chance that, like, he can get hooked on this stuff? Oh, absolutely. Log, that's already happened. That ship's already sailed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised Log, he hasn't Log. already. He, well, he keeps talking about arcane. He's used it well, so, well, keep mind, I'm, I'm still a wolf, so, so everything I say is only being said to like 1% at a time. It's different for everybody. Sometimes just after one dose. Cold. <laughs> I, can always, I can respond straight back to you. Really oh, well. that's right, because you, you hear what I'm thinking anyway. Yeah, yeah well... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when he has to focus on one person at a time yeah. and make a connection with them, and then for one minute he can communicate no matter how the distance, or five miles. Five miles. Yeah. Like, well, since I'm a wolf right now, I can only do a very yeah, encouraging right, right. thing to like encourage me to keep multiclassing <laughs> as a sorcerer. <laughs> I mean, the bard capstone is garbage, so putting at least putting one level in something else is great. Now, um, the way the table is set up, there's a lot of things I can do with this and still keep pretty well with my. Get another feed or an ASI just from doing 
something, you know? Yeah. All right, anyway, talk, stop enough about mechanics. I could prepare more. Do you wish to microdose? It does help. I myself have uh, developed an addiction, but microdosing helps keep it in check. <laughs> but it, then you just don't get the uh, uh, spell benefits. The boost. Yeah. The, the <laughs> magic surge, no. But you also don't explode. Granted, it's not it's the best I've been able to come up with so far. It's a highly volatile, addictive chemical uh, made through infused alchemy. From what I know of it, the... Let's find out. What I know about it, it was something about it, some sort of failed attempt to keep forces in the field consistently to be able to access to magic and they found that there was a side effect of even those who can't tap into the arcane were able to use it however the detriments far outweighed the benefits so it was the idea was trashed but it still found its way into the underground which is why it's now on the black market and it is so useful it also makes you really high and feel amazing for a short amount of time. I mean, that's, that's true. That's you said perk. don't recommend someone gets hooked on it, though. I don't recommend you try it, but it seems like, as you said, that ship has sailed. So you can either manage it, or it's your life. Well, I'm, I'm down to the last dose, so... If we're, if we're going to be traveling, we should probably get at least one more. Right. Is there a particular color or flavor you had in mind? Well, Argus keeps saying he's not going to take it if you don't get the red one. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can afford the red one, because this isn't the red 50. This would be on me. You have done his children a great service. It's the least I could do. A couple doses of each? That's what I think. <laughs> it was there, if I remember correctly, there, there was, was a green, a blue, too. and a green. Mm -hmm. oh, so that's what, I've got one that's of what he blue. knows how to make. Yeah. So yeah, so I've got one of the blue right now, so yeah, so we get at least one of the red. Which makes you it's think, like, of, hmm, what about, how does he know how to make this? Sure. This is so <laughs> outlawed. So, just clarification, you said infusion. That's correct. My invention infusions carry a piece of my energy. Like, I have to be constantly infusing them. Yes, that's what I found so fascinating about artifices at yourself, which is why I would love to take a look at more, is it the more same, of your magitech. Is it the same type of infusion? Like, is there a no, piece of the alchemist? No, it's more of an alchemical alchemist? infusion. Okay. It's not... So no, that it's... permanent... That permanent source of magic is imbued in it alchemically instead of arcane. <laughs> Um, Dogs are here. <laughs> yes, it is more of a... It comes from an ingredient instead of a person. Yes. Okay. Um, that, he, that was my clarification. Yes, yes. It's not part of my person. It's for my essence. I know this is... It, the interaction between certain catalytic and magically enhanced ingredients. Yes. Are that, for example, arcane contains traces of terrazine. That's what I've been snorting? Yes. Yes, a, a very low dose of spent dust of terrorism. Yes, it's how the the energy is able to be dispersed, dispersed throughout your bloodstream. Do you have enough spent terrorism around here that we could make a small container for any active terrorism we find? The terrorism I have is dust. Small amount of it. I this is very just, delicate. I don't, I only need a pinch to create a dose of arcane, and I don't create it very often. One dose lasts me for about a year as I take small granules throughout the day. This is a very delicate question. Are there any such infused recipes that you would be willing to part with? <laughs> You're talking about a science chef. I, I am not an alchemist. I cannot do no, what you but do. you are an artificer. And I find you... I want to learn from how you do that to perhaps aid my science down the road. 
All right. So not as competitor, not as a student of yours, but I want to see how you mix what with what to make As I want to see happen. how you create that. I will trade you the old battery for any recipe that you would be willing to part with. This battery is spent? It has very minimal amounts of power left. We drained almost could all of its ability. Power something mundane. Yes. Something that could serve food, maybe. Yes. Very simple functions. Deal. What is it you desire? Like I said, the any recipe that you have that directly infuses magic. So that I can learn from the interaction of ingredients. Or as many different ones as you may be willing to part with. As I mentioned, and not to be capricious, but Terrazine has many, many, many uses, one of which is an amazing catalyst in order to infuse magic into alchemical ingredients that don't already have inherent magic affinities. Understood. That is a linchpin in many of these recipes, especially arcane. However, doing so causes your body to become dependent upon it. So, for example, I could enhance a healing potion that I brewed with terrazine dust to make it even in further. Two, three, four, maybe even five times fold as powerful. Mm -hmm. But you might find yourself needing more healing potions. More and not just healing potions, but enhanced. Anything with terrazine in it. That's correct. And I understand the terrazine portion. That's the batteries themselves are. That is one of the ingredients in them. Mm. Yes, they they are used as power sources for much of the mechanic. Yes, mechanis in uh, more bad. I'm I'm more in interested in what reacts with what to produce what. You're results. looking for basic alchemical. Yes. Vanilla. Yes. As it were. Your basics, essentially. Absolutely. You wish to be trained in such alchemical brew. Are you flavoring something that you're about to get, or are you... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to g gain insights from her recipes there. to perhaps use in inventions down the road. I understand. You want a crash course in alchemy. Yes. Can I use her recipes to there. infuse certain elements into other things? Like, um, can I put lightning damage into something with the knowledge I that I can glean from her? What recipes? I can teach you time allowing or fired is or what combinations to stay away from <laughs> yes that would be that is the very <laughs> most thing helpful you need to be to learn and i can teach you basic elemental hybrids that can yes give you some that is what i'm reaction. looking for granted we're talking a puff of smoke uh, small embers i can work up from thing. there if i know where to start do be careful i still have all 10 be, be thankful for that. There are many other alchemists who have literally, quite literally, blown themselves up. We met one. So of artificers. Mm. That's very true. Um, yes, um, if half a day, I can first teach you what to stay away from, and two, teach you three elements that I am well versed in that might be able to help you. One is fire, one is acid, and one is lightning. The basic ingredients for such a thing include and help. Uh, and you have things like salamander scales. Other element, elemental so fungi, use. spores, help with the acid. Yes. Yes, I, I can make a list for you. Granted, not a big part of alchemy is improvising. Realizing that you have a guidebook uh, from what you've learned and then finding substitutes for these ingredients because you can't always go to the top of the mountain and get exactly dragon stuff. Yeah. That, unfortunately, just takes experience and practice. But yes, if that's what you want to do today, I can do that. If you give me that battery.
Thank you. Unfortunately, I... You galvanized this. I, from scratch. With Terezi. Yes. Fascinating. Uh, there's another ingredient that is almost impossible to get that provides... It's, it's like the active terazine, providing the energy, like the fuel source of the enchantment. Mm -hmm. It's like terazine, but it's different. And I don't know that you can get more of that. Do you care to elaborate? It's uh, some sort of a blue dust that has inherent arcane power to it. Where did you find such dust? <laughs> I found a pile as a child deep underground. We have also found it in oh, a tunnel of sorts through space. There were beings in that tunnel and their essence. Are you talking about actual the fabric of space? Yeah. We we were shown a, uh, a portal of sorts. While traveling through that portal, we encountered beings who, when slain, condensed into this dust. Mm -hmm. That is far beyond my purview, um, to be sure. Uh, I'm explaining so that you understand. It's essentially an equivalent to Terezine, but not. Interesting. This could be revolutionary. This is fantastic. Can you get more? No. That is good. At, at, at the current capabilities that we have, no. They seem drawn to Trisheni. Mm -hmm. So it is possible if we encounter them again and slay them, we will end up with more. Yeah, if they're after me again, if they're protecting me, then I don't want to necessarily they are, slay they are, them. They're hunting you. Um, some of them. <clears throat> yeah. You see, Mildance is, is quite lost in this explanation. Like, uh, they also blocked off that path from us, too. It's, it's a complicated relationship, but uh, needless to say, much like any other magical creature, they do have their components. Does their relation to you have anything to do with, perhaps, that you may have this dust within you? Uh, Have you bled yourself lately? <laughs> We've seen her bleed. It is not blue dust. No. I, I, <laughs> Just a thought. I, I, the, um, the reason the battery itself is spent is we used it to fuel her resurrection. Right. A lot of blood You there. died. A lot of blood. I did. It was... Um, Very briefly, like seconds of death. Our cleric, using his abilities and the energy from that battery, were able to pull her soul back. It's and like arcane. It's, and arcane. It sounds like you and this dust and death and these creatures have, are being inextricably drawn towards each other. My theory is she uses magic that warps reality. Mm. So she is, if, if they are from the space behind the fabric ours, of space, she is somehow pissing them off. <laughs> well, some of them. Others are like, oh, yes, I want to help you with your experiments, or something like that. I, I, I mean, I, I just, just... Her magic is drawing yeah. their attention in some way. It's the particular fast. flavor of magic she uses. I, unfortunately, am an alchemist, and not as bad just, as this. if you come across a strangely glowing blue dust that no one knows what to do with it, I, save it. it could be incredibly useful as an alternative to... The more dangerous Terezin. My my abilities. My ability to infuse magic into objects that I create comes from that dust. Carrying it around with me, using it, infusing like it's soaked into my fingers to the point where I believe it may be what awoke my powers. Mm -hmm. And you use it in all of your mechanics? Yes. And you have a surplus? No. No. We I, have... I have none left. 
I have one little bit left and I can show you, but I must hold on to it. Just so you can see and if you find something like it in the future. The new battery in the, the big guy back there was the last of mine. I understand. Um, it seemed like you may need it more than I do. Mine is more merely out of a scientific extreme curiosity. However, it also, if what you say is true, then you will most likely run into more sooner than later. Mm-hmm. If we come back with a surplus, I would. We will be ecstatic. Supply it to you. It could be revolutionary. People thought black powder was revolutionary. This could change. Have you everything. tried mixing black powder with terzine? Have you tried not a good idea. It? None of those <laughs> things I told you. None not of the do. things that is on the list of things not to do. Almost immediate ignition. Interesting. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Terezine, no matter how spent it is, is still Act. microscopically growing, however slow. Consider it a radioactive half-life, if you were, constantly giving off energy oh. or, or emanating some sort of... All it takes is a, an anomaly or an, an erratic uh, burst from the spent Terezine for it to ignite the blackout. And that is entirely unpredictable. You just gave me the secret of how to make a grenade. <laughs> oh, you mean the Grenuda? Grenuda, yeah. Yes, they exist. They're mostly purely black powder covered in slag metal. With a fuse of yes. terrazine dust. Oh, I suppose that, that just sounds like a ticking time bomb with no sure fire of when it is going to explode. Keep it in my bag of holding. Pull it. Throw it. <laughs> Kaboom. <laughs> I still believe that time passes in your bag of holding, correct? Right? It does. So, unless you want everything in your bag of holding to be exploded. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just it existing. It's what if you can constant it? state of emission of energy? Can we take out the good stuff and still do that? Contain like, it. Leave nitpick in there and enjoy us. <laughs> Contain it within its own very thin glass vial. That way, on impact, the inner glass vial shatters, releasing it into the gunpowder. And then it ignites. That's, again, possible. Again, no way of knowing when the terrorism would ignite the black powder. Uh, a fuse. Just ideas. Seems, of, Sorry. Of course, of course. Uh, as soon as you give me scraps, you're more my talking brain... about more likely a terrorism grenudo, which would just be a shard of terrorism wrapped in a. a its own spent self, and when shattered would just... That is... Sounds That's, like a war crime to me. It's what Emerus used against us. Right. Below. I mean, he was going to take out this entire city. He... To, to escape us, he threw a shard of active terrorism Granuda at us. Mm-hmm. We were able to burn it out before it... I owe you another debt of thanks, then. Before it spread... It was also in the vicinity of an active arcane circle, so it would have been even worse. Right. But yes, we were able to eradicate it. Which is what gave me the idea for the gunpowder grenade. I'm going to take my dose and then we'll get to work. Little <laughs> uh, Darth, I have to ask, especially mm. after everything that's happening, do you still want to do that biopsy of my liver? It may help you with anything. I don't know. Um, He's given me enough reason to actually trust him that I'm willing to do it now instead yeah. of just. If you're willing. I am. I feel I can trust you enough. After last night, uh, I, would, I wouldn't be willing to do it otherwise. Full disclosure. Mm. His successful completion of the challenge was magically enhanced. Did you say that in front of Cole? Yep. The, f- the fuck, man? You what? You magically enhanced me for that. An, an ability to resist poisons may have been introduced into your bloodstream. Mm. Cole's just gonna stand there and look at you like <laughs> he's just standing there, mouth open, speechless. Like I mean, I you just literally took away another piece of liver. 
I just be special. It may not be as valuable to you Correct. as you think it may be. <laughs> <laughs> you grow back, it is your liver. It's the fastest regenerating organ in your body. Other than your tongue. And if he you would did like, still you would survive still like it. it. Brother Donath, I'm willing to let you take a look. He at did it. still survive it, so it may have altered it in some I'm not. I don't know how that works. I just found that mine might be terrible. I can always use liver. <laughs> uh, Whatever it's you like acid, and just like it collects in the body. <laughs> I, I. This is the first I'm hearing about this. So, if it's still valuable to you, then what I'm willing to let you have it. I'd be willing to give you a lesser healing potion in exchange for a, a biopsy of your liver. Understandable. And the healing potion, if you'd like to give it to me, is fine, but it's not necessary. That's the least I can do. Uh, all right. Sorry. So surgery. Alchemy basics. Feed the children. I, I mean, I can help with feeding the kids. I uh, have some good... I'm gonna Sorry, Log. Some good You're going to be bored again today. I'll find something. No no fight pits down here. Do you can... want me to brew you arcane or not? Yes, please. How much and which kind? Can you do one of the red, one of the blue? Do we want green? I mean, we could give Karina a shot and see how it works. So, I mean, so we'll, we'll one of each, if, if you can manage. If it was not asking too much. <laughs> I mean, I, that's a lot of work to do in one day. If you were here for more than one day, it would help. A red and a blue? Red and a blue. Surgery will take several hours. Okay. Yeah, so just, just red and blue, then. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have to sleep. <laughs> yes, I... By tomorrow, I could have all of this complete. You will be helping me with the surgery. Yes, I, I need your nimble fingers. You. With the alchemy as well. Yes. As part of my. Granted, uh, now that we think of it, uh, human liver is quite a good catalyst for a certain regenerative property of healing potions. Uh, a good substitute for um, another type of uh, uh, flump matter. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a creature, yes? Yes, it's, they're, they're mostly made of like a jellyfish ectoplasm. Um, I've heard of it. Highly regenerative. The, the best type of material to use for healing potions, but other regenerative materials, uh, again, like as, as healing potions are somewhat magical, they do take on the properties. Would like a lizard's tail? Possibly, yes. Something along a gecko's those lines. Tail, yes. More specifically, yes. Possibly. Understood. I, I get you. The what more you're potent the regeneration, the more potent the potion could be. Sure. Of course, then well, you have to distill it and let it gain uh, potency over a number of years, or decades. Possibly the closer to the intended recipient, also the better. Ah, uh, yes. You like mean. Like a human uh, liver on a human. Like a blood type compatibility. Or just like a human liver in a humanoid I healing understand. potion. Yes, uh, genetic genetic com compatibility. Um, yes, interesting thing about humans is that their anatomy and their genes and their genetic uh, structure is mostly compatible with almost all other humanoids, which is more why, more uh, valuable. Yes, yeah, their DNA is extremely adaptable and variable, meaning that. Well, are well, the reasons why we see so many half breeds today? Cross variations of certain genetics. <laughs> your friend here, most likely. Humans appear to be have the most deoxyribonucleic acid variability that I have ever encountered. Is Log's brain hurting with these words we're using right now? Probably. He's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes, I can make you your drugs, and he was like, cool. Are, are, is it like, are you hearing like Charlie Brown's parents right <laughs> now? <laughs> like, <laughs> <as we're talking? laughs> Pretty much, it's just all going over his head. Um, yeah, so I'll help her do these things today. Them. 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 Dog. Them. Dog. Non Dog. Can you do me a favor? Them. I'm well, out. Stay... For some reason, here. in my head, Miladonith is a oh, woman. You don't want me to help? So I keep equating it to you. No. <laughs> Go play with the kids. The kids would love you to play with them. 
Wait, That's actually a really good job for you. <laughs> oh, surgery. Yes, yes, yes. And you had spell work to do. I had a little bit more to finish up here, but I think uh, other than that and, you know, helping distribute the good, good berries and stuff, it, I, you know. Safka, do you have something <clears throat> you can entertain yourself with? Sofka, like, pulls day. out a third rat and just starts, like, twirling it. <laughs> like, the rat just starts climbing all over the place. <laughs> yeah. It tracks. Um, I, do we want to try to find Argus or just hang out here? Or do we want to even, like, try to help more people or, or try to contact, like, if she's even still alive, a security force? Helping order. people? It's been over two days now. Most people have rested. We're not going to be able to help them like we did these people. They're they're gonna turn. I know. And the further the further we away the further away we are is probably better because there's nothing we can do to deal with that. I feel like there has to be some sort of PSA or something we could send. Like uh, if but your friend has know. been bitten, kill them now. I don't know. I feel if just... security four is part of. That plan. He is not susceptible. No. As a construct, he cannot be bitten and turned. So, what does he care? He does. The rest of the town. For sure. Burns. Yeah, but Percy didn't when you sent him that message and he crumpled it up. And... Absolutely. But so, the rest of the town turns to zombies and he kills them all, reports back up the chain. Entire town wiped out by zombie. Please send reinforcements. Or reassign me, even. He may not want. Time to abandon this place. Yeah. It is a walled city. He could just leave him behind, too. Quarantine the city and... But wouldn't that help? I don't know. There's a part of me that if he's doing that, that could mean that Eminus is still involved and able to go back to Sarnlu and potentially even attack this no longer a fortified position if he were to do that. Perhaps oh, this man. becomes his next... She just got us thinking plans within plans within plans within plans like a thousand times and over And we're now. probably completely wrong, but <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. now we're all like super paranoid about everything. Yep. Yeah. That's why Log's just not thinking about it. <laughs> what? what? Log, Log has a problem between the numbers of four and five. Yeah, five and six. <laughs> yeah, it's going from one hand to the other. Right. That's true, that's hand. true. <laughs> what if he is allowed? <laughs> Cole spent a half an hour trying to explain that to Log one day. He Oof. still doesn't get it. Sokka like, only has close. half of what's going on and is like, I mean, it sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what if, you know, this is a good fortified position, right? What if this is his plan of all along to wipe out the entire population? This becomes his new... Like, see, if this uh, city is undead, quarantine, do not enter. Well, and if it's undead with what we know about the host right. and his. This becomes a his perfect city hideout. Of control. A perfect hideout for yeah. him. He could basically make himself the lord of the city if it's all. No one undead. would even know. Absolutely. Because yeah. they would never come in. Anybody who came in would never leave again. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Okay, so back to that question then, do we, is there anything we can do for the ones that haven't been bit or infected yet do we to, to try to change the tide here or, or lead them to the triway maybe might be our best bet. Mm. Do we even have a reason why they would listen to us? Gutbuster winner. <laughs> Gutbuster winner. Um, do you know anyone alive that you could convince to spread a word. I mean, not without going out there and finding out who's still alive. The warden is the only one that I can think of that might might be still alive, but given the note, I don't know if she's she is or if that was just a you know proposition that oh Yeah, I mean if we can supposition, excuse me. If we can tell her what we know about the disease and now's the time to evacuate any healthy people. Tell who? The, the warden, warden. The, the one captain. that was above security for. If she's still alive. Just Hey, we've seen this before. Anyone unbitten, uninfected, needs to get out as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. Is Shakar still a owl? Yes. 
He could he could try to find and find her and send her a note if we want. You could even just write a simple one that says do not trust security for. Yeah. The only issue I see with that is then security for if he were to intercept it would know that we know, right? That he's I'm not saying I'm not saying sign it, I'm saying Let's. We we can walk log through writing it. He won't even know who wrote it then. I know, but he. <laughs> I did send him my owl, like, uh, just uh, you know, a Look. day or two ago, and it. Uh, and he know, could you uh, we signed it, the Argent Flame. You're also assuming that she would trust a random note. All you have to do is place a seal of doubt. I've read a number of stories where all it takes is a seal of doubt to change. Number of mines. Those are stories. I'm not sure how true they are. Uh, a construct that has defended this city for millennia, or a note from an unknown sender. I said all it takes is a seed. I don't see her blindly. Know, but it takes a while. Well, it's. Uh, but Says the druid. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that was perfect. Perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a while. We don't. We don't. Do we? I'm not saying that it's something that planting this is going to take effect immediately. If we can do it. But it might be able to give the warden a warning if the warden is still around. If, if we can do it, it's worth a shot. If we can do it without endangering ourselves further, it's worth a shot. Yeah. I think that way it might be. That might be the way. So, I help you with the things we've asked of you today. You're getting operated on. If you can take notes of that operation for me, that would be very helpful. Because I'm, unless you've got something that allows me to be awake while you're inside of me, Belladonis, which I don't think I actually want. <laughs> I mean, I could anesthetize the area and make it painless so you could watch. But seeing as we'll be working on your liver at the time, if you get nauseous, that would complicate things. Probably better for you to be unconscious, though. Mm -hmm. You retching while she's doing a delicate they, procedure. While they, they, they doing are. a delicate procedure inside of your body would be very, very it's bad. Sometimes. <laughs> you just corrected me, and I like immediately. <laughs> yeah. I have made the same horrible mistake. Oh, on numerous occasions. somebody typed in about like her too. I love this lady, and I was like, "They." I, I made sure to type "they" in there because she is or they are. <laughs> See, I just did it right there. <laughs> 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 It's especially uh, hard with people you like don't have a visual on. Yeah, right. This is a yeah. a nebulous imaginary yeah. person. That's why I screw up on soft edge all the time yeah. too. I'm, I'm trying to make my voice higher. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to cast. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just trying I'm to. I'm going make to it. summon a die wolf. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to make it a little, like, still true yeah. to her character, but I'm also like, I don't know. I'm trying. Okay, <laughs> and we wait and hope Argus comes back today. Yes. All right. All right. So, uh, team I mean, notes, no one else has the ability to send, do they? Not like that. So we can't just like reach out and be like, hey, you coming back anytime soon? Not without having seen Argus. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, you've seen Argus. Right, but you I know. Do need to. Uh, <laughs> Cole doesn't know how his power works, so I mean, Cole would actually try and reach out to Argus from where he's at, but get nothing. Um, I think you have to like make eye contact. Yeah, no, no, I, it's not that I have to make eye contact, I have to be able to see them. It's, uh, I have to be able to see somebody within 30 feet of me. Right. But so because this is a new thing, Cole has no Visually it. looking at him, not yeah. have seen him once in the past. It's more of like that kind of in initial innate thing of like, you're not really fully aware of something, kind of like object permanence. Yeah. You're not fully aware of something until it's actually within your vision. Right. Um, you have to make that connection and hold it. And then you can hold it if they leave. It's like when you're watching yeah. those those movies where some some superhero kid has the telekinetic abilities, and you, as a kid, first try to see, oh, maybe I have them too. You don't focus on an item that's in another room. You focus on the remote that's sitting on the table right before right. you. That's what you try to move. Uh, the way I'm thinking about it right now is, don't at me with this. 
is Star Wars. <laughs> with the, uh, the with, Force. With Obi-Wan Kenobi when he's first doing the Jedi mind trick on yeah. there. These are, like, he looks directly at them and does the hand. This is not, these are not the droids you're, you're looking, looking for, for right? kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, but Cole doesn't realize that's how his power works, so he might, he would actually shout out from there just Argus, and whoever he sees in the room would hear Who's the last it. person you connected with? Uh, well, it's been, it's been a minute, so. So actually, since he was just talking to Milodonath, it would probably be Milodonath that heard it. Right. I heard you. That's, that's not what I was going for, but that's good to I, know. I imagine. <laughs> Please don't do that while I'm doing surgery. I'll be asleep, so I hope not. <laughs> I hope not as well. Fascinating. That is. Maybe I could take a biopsy <laughs> of your brain as well. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> look at his eyes. Check, maybe check out his eyes. His eyes? Oh, yes. They are different. Why are they different? I don't know. According to them, I woke up with them yesterday. The last two months have been weird. Should I harvest some sclera fluid and do some um, experiments? No, 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 no. All right. Your way. To say that the last two months have been bizarre would be a vast understatement. Mm. Mm. I'm quickly finding that out to be true. And I can only foresee even more bizarre <laughs> things happening to us <laughs> if we continue along this path. It's a little adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Well, um, before it gets too late, I suppose we should get started. Um, I am more... You will need time to recover. Do that first, then the arcane. Yes. Uh, Sofka, would you be willing to help with the healing process? Once he is finished, and to look after him while I coach your comrade, of course, in the ways of Alpha. Thank you, much appreciated. Um, you two, I do not have a job for you. Uh, just I, don't get in my way. I could go invisible and search the city for Argus. Log, please don't leave <laughs> on your own. But I, I'll be invisible. I actually don't hate uh, that, yeah. as long as you don't try to help anyone. Right. <laughs> I mean, no interactions. I will just search for Argus. Go out, take a look around, see what's going on. Come you, back. You could. You could you, know, you know, you only have an hour, right? I mean, it's not a huge city. It's. I mean, you could um, stay in contact with Shikar. He could fly up above your head, and um, you could keep talking to him, right? And to see if anything happens, if anything bad happens, and, and he can come back. That should work. All right. I, I feel more comfortable with, the, with that because then he's not alone. Right. And I at least um, supervised. I can at least keep <laughs> seeing where where you are if something were. She can check in on you. Yeah. 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 Does that work? Yeah, that'll work. All right, and then you know uh, what? You, um, your your book. Uh, it still seems a little hungry, and I I do want to keep away certain things, but how did? <laughs> Still tucked away. <laughs> it starts to peel back and just like drool starts slipping out the sides of your wrist. Yeah. Um, uh, should should we you might want to watch out for that book. We, we will be buying some paper uh, at some point. Yes, but I did not hear you say that you harvested quite a bit of paper at the uh, now proprietor's uh, establishment? We didn't get... Lower quality. Yeah, not not good for, for spells, you know. Cole pulls out his Legend. pounded, pounded Legend. paper and shows it to Milanon. This is what we found. It's workable. It's, it's ledger paper. It can be used. Um, you desire spell-worthy arcane, arcane crafting. It seems to be what Parchment. it prefers. Yeah. It, it consumes it? Hmm. And ink. The, the book does. I can whip up some ink uh, quickly. That would be super helpful. Uh, take me five minutes. Okay. Squid ink, you okay? Uh, it's just like the you use. I mean, it, it, it'll do in a pinch. I prefer the type of ink that really comes from this rare type of goat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
but uh, <laughs> sacred scarab shell. Right, exactly. <laughs> But, uh, I'm now trying to think about the process of how you harvest ink from a goat. <laughs> like, how does that work? It comes out of its horns, actually. That's it. <laughs> you boil down the horns until it like, yeah. turns into this yeah. thick, viscous. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Keratin based ink. Uh, that would be pre- very permanent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> be like writing with epoxy. Yeah, and you just pigment it, it with like some of the. Like the the uh, the black flowers. <laughs> yep, and and beetle shells. The beetle shells. It's a very good point. Yes, the carapace. <laughs> it's a very good point. That's that's possible. where the Egypt the Egyptians got right some of their ink, mm-hmm. their pink pigments. That's correct. So cool, guys. Love fucking historical etymology. Um, Entomology, I should say. Well, a little bit of... A little bit of both. (laughs) (laughs) Words and bugs! (laughs) All right, anyway. So, um, so yes, the squid ink will do in a pinch. (laughs) Okay, squid ink. Uh, Very good. Um, uh, All right, and you need good paper. I can supply you with uh, 50 gold worth of good paper. You bought me mostly out before. So. I know, I'm sorry, I'm a little greedy when it comes to that. But, uh... I'm sure you'll be able to find more at the Traveler's. What was it? The old blind man. I can't remember his name. Oh, oh yes, oh. we uh, we met him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He runs the general store. The Traveler's Thrift. Low far. Low far. Yes, the Traveler's Thrift. I was afraid. Low far, yes. Uh, yeah, a, little, a little crotchety, but otherwise a well mannered old man. Um, very well kept stock. Uh, should be able to find that. I hope he's all right. You could check on him while you're scouting. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that works. I could do that. If, if you start to feel it fade, just disappear. Reappear, disappear, like do what you need to do. It's all the way on the other side of the city, though. That might yeah, be that's that's why I'm saying he may not have enough time. Like now. he may have to, to make himself invisible again. Call it spell splaining to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of explaining. <laughs> I don't even understand my own powers completely, but your powers. <laughs> but but they you were got it. You got exactly it. When you feel like, like it's stopping. <laughs> Roll <laughs> high. <laughs> Cole, I, Cole does have a similar spell though, because we both cast it last yeah. night, so he does know how to. No, I was making fun of you. Yeah, just giving you shit. Oh, I know, but it's also you know. Bug just rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Okay. Um, cool. Happy hunting. Let's. So, to go with the bear, and they put you into a room in the back where they have cleared off a table. Um, they wipe it down with what looks like some sort of disinfectant. They put on these long, um, what looks like tanned hide leather gloves. <laughs> um, they set up a tray, a metal tray with a bunch of tools. Uh, Zimdek, if you didn't know better, these look like torture implements, but, you know, medieval surgery tools kind of look like that. Even they, nowadays, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I still have... <laughs> well, no, medie- that's where surgery tools came from, is medieval torture tools, yeah. so... I still have the Simic... The uh, Melon Baller. Yes. Oh. Uh, I don't... It, not for this, but uh, it's enchanted Press against... Impressive condition. It's enchanted against deterioration. We could take a Melon Ball of your... Not necessarily for this, but I have no use for it. I, I mean, figured it's the you perfect might. size is exactly what I need. Uh, if that's what you're going to work best for you. It appears to be so clean. Wonderful. I need more of these. <laughs> Ruins. Adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> We, exactly. To be fair, we do suspect that this may have been a leftover tool of the person from a lab that did this ah. type of work. Yes. This is the person you, the Simic you yes. were speaking of before? Uh, suspected. We don't know for sure if this was his tool. That's it was in his laboratory. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I wouldn't have really established that. It was if you find laboratory. more information on that, by the way, I would love to see it. Uh, Simic science is a fascinating mixture of uh, anatomy plus alchemy plus magic uh, all rolled into one to create something entirely new. 
Yeah, I mean, my sister does it all the time. So that's yes, her I, thing. I mean, they, they I mean, said that ancient Simic scientists are the ones that created the owl bears. If uh, you see a Kenrin that looks exactly like her, but what? with a bow. <laughs> Swap colors, like. I yeah. am stuck. With yes. carrying a, a bow? Yes. Her sister. Yeah. Interesting. Um, she... Would she have any reason to come here? Probably not. <laughs> No, I mean, she's, just, she's off the Just mean. Yeah, don't hold your breath, but you How? know. Why is she not here now? Uh, that's a long story, but she's oh. off in the Twin Isles area right now. Oh, Ooh, this is quite far. I've never <laughs> heard Kenrin <laughs> and, and the that goblin that kicked be that separate from Jack's ass. Yeah, Usually they all taps just the hit. <laughs> it kind of sucks, but it's, it's all right. Really. Traveling under a goblin yeah. captain, ship captain. No, human ship captain. No, well, it's a bit complicated. It was Captain Hurt. Yeah. Uh, well, there was a, but there was also <laughs> Captain Avery, too. They're like... The I, Captain Avery. The Captain Avery. Uh, um, why, you know that name? It's old folklore. So. The song of him, his crew eating each, eat, each other. I'm surprised that they that got this far. That's an old sailor. tune. Well, no, I heard it down in Sasso, so... Yes, it's an old sailor's tune, absolutely. Would he absolutely be... Okay. But the yeah. captain Avery. Mm-hmm. According He's to alive. them, that's what they told us, yeah. I mean, he doesn't have his all his limbs, so it make it, it Yeah, they makes did mention sense. that, that he had been cut up a bit. Yeah. I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> <laughs> like I said. But at the same time, I, I actually don't want to deal with any of Harrowing, episode. bizarre, but quite interesting. Adventurous, of yes, mm-hmm. of course. Um, well, we should get started. Um, this tincture will knock you out for... Eight hours. Uh, you shouldn't feel any pain. Unless I've really messed something up, you should not awake. Uh, if I sense that you might be awaking, I can give you a second dose. However, a third dose could be fated, so we're going to try to avoid that. If it's the third dose, just end it at that point. If it comes with a third dose, just let's just end it at that point, instead of risk the fatality thing. I understand. So just let you awake during the procedure. That's what we need to do, apparently, yeah. Of course. Um... I just not sure how, as you said, your liver. The reason why I'm doing it because it is technically still a poison in your body, so your liver will try to filter it out. Right. So if you do have a superhuman liver, this might be, as you you know, gain tolerance to medications or you have less. Well, I less up effective. until about 15 minutes ago, I actually thought I had a superhuman liver. So, well, that's still to be determined. I yeah, we shall find out sooner than later. Um, very well. See, they take a moment. <laughs> I'm about to do surgery. Uh, not when I just witnessed so much, so much surgery. Less traumatic surgery. <laughs> One can only hope. Um. All right. Well, I'm gonna pull out one of my injectors with a cure wounds in it just so it's handy all right <laughs> set it on the table <laughs> um yeah you, you're one of your syringes um it's like they're like for you they're big syringes too yeah. they're like about like three inches in diameter they're those oh big God. boys you the, the plunger <laughs> itself is as large as you're a gnome too yeah. the plunger itself is the size of your palm so you jam it in with one hand and go <laughs> with the other hand and it like injects a good like liter of fluid into somebody. I imagine them as like spring powered. So like I stick it in and trigger it. And oh, it, like an EpiPen? It like cool. It spring power <laughs> injects. It makes that clink like copper on metal. Yeah. yeah. When it when it hits. I mean, I um, would have heard that sound before because you've dosed coal like that before. Granted, it is Magitek type yeah. of thing. So it rather than like causing an organ to burst because it's so much pressure of so much liquid being put in there, it kind of permeates everything and spreads out. It actually goes through organs and permeates into your heart and your other organs. It doesn't get just stuck in a vein and then causes that vein to burst. It goes into the it's... Tissue. I'm sorry? It goes into the interstitial. That's right. It goes into the interstitial <laughs> tissue and disperses rather quickly um, through enhanced Magitek means. Almost like there's little nanobots moving it throughout your body. Yeah. Ooh. Um, <laughs> these are like little bits of catalyst stuff. Right. Old family recipes <laughs> yeah. that I figured out how to like spell infuse extra cool. 
Like so, one's just chicken noodle soup. Yes, you just exactly. Like, that's fantastic. Pure wounds. <laughs> pure wounds it's chicken like, noodle soup. It's like miso broth. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, I love it. God, I love this fucking campaign. Oh, so much fun. Um, great. <laughs> we um, love throwing monkey wrenches at TJ, where he just has to adapt in the moment. Yes, anding and improv is one of my favorite things. Okay, cool. Uh, especially when it comes to D and D. Great, so um, he hands you a tincture. It's a clear liquid. It looks to be the same kind of tincture that the children were given right. yesterday. Knowing, knowing that cold, yeah. no you problem. Douse it within, you count backwards from 60, uh, you get to like 49 and you're out. Um, so, uh, you do that. Um, and he like starts putting surgery gowns and stuff on. Uh, he starts setting up what looks like butcher's paper around him. Is uh, he very organized? <laughs> yes, he is. I roll my eyes when I see him like. <laughs> <laughs> He's very organized. He's got all of his stuff in these tiny little like apothecary shelves and long um, little drawers. They look like the uh, card system from libraries as they pull out like that. Um, the card catalogs. Dwarves and elves and their fastidiousness. Yes. I mean, <laughs> It's very important. You don't want to grab the instrument when you can't look accidentally. I mean, you should always know where your tools are regardless of how, what condition you work. This helps. When you have to memorize 1,000 tools, this, this helps. Organization helps. If you know... I just know where my stuff is. As Cole's passing out, he goes, It's Note like yourself. writing don't sheet ever music have you. every note in the right place. <laughs> and you're gone. Uh, uh, th- note to self, don't ever let you conduct surgery on me. I mean, I don't do a bad Hold job. this. Thank you. Please be quiet. Thank you. <laughs> now, that, now that he's passed out, I telepath to you, please, draw a dick on his face for a second. <laughs> I give you a nod. Just like testicles around the eyeballs, just a big old dick. No, down the nose. Yes. Working into the contours. I, of I the had to face. wait until he was actually passed out before I could do. It. Oh my god! Okay. I'm surprised you did it this time, but not the first time I was passed out. Okay, so surgery ensues. Uh, it makes a incision. Um, uh, uses um, uh, what he, he does pull out a couple leeches and uses their enzymes to which coagulates a blood in certain areas. Well, it doesn't necessarily coagulate; it just stops the flow of blood to certain areas, so you don't like bleed out when he makes incisions. He no, pe- apparently knows what he's doing because he's like you know he knows what chemicals and enzymes do what. So he attaches some leeches, makes an incision. Um, he doesn't need suction because he has the leeches, and he starts at it. He starts moving some muscle tissue, by the way, and starts reaching into your cavity with an incision no larger than three inches. His s- small live fingers able to get in there and like move certain areas in order to uh, see the liver itself. Um, uh, you just kind of like look over his shoulder every once in a while. He just like bumps, bumps you with his hip, being like, "Please back up. Please don't breathe down my neck." <laughs> um, are you in, gonna draw a dick on his face while he's deep in his guts? No, I'll wait. To After he's done, yeah. he's still passing out. <laughs> Once he's sewn back up. Cole, please roll a constitution saving throw to see if you come to consciousness and your liver uh, meta- me- metabolizes oh, this. <laughs> do, you, do you want to fail? <laughs> I think you want to fail. <laughs> Not according to the golden snitch, I don't want to fail. Dirty 20. Dirty 20, that was the DC. Cole, you start to uh, wake up. A good, like, 15 minutes into the third period. Um, luckily, you don't feel any pain. Yet. Uh, I'm going to roll a perception check for Milladonis because, with a disadvantage, because they're not paying attention to you. They're very steeped in their work. Um, wow, still pretty good. Milladonis notices. Do you notice? Go ahead and roll a perception check. <laughs> Which yet? Seven. Seven. No. <laughs> and the doctor is like, oh, nurse, nurse, quickly, quickly, please administer this, uh, massage his throat, and give this to him. Are you like, oh? <laughs> uh, yeah, you just get knocked out at that one because it's a second dose. It's not like it's like getting more morphine. You're, there's no constant they say is going to make you that unless you're fucking. Pumped or super. I, I, I am not a dwarf. I do not have resistance to poison. Yeah, so you just go back <laughs> out. Okay. So, um, 
Great. That happens. While this is happening, um, are you turning into a wolf and going invisible? Or going well, you see, well, so first I turn into it, because I've been a wolf this whole time, so I turn into a bugbear. Cast invisible. the spell, then turn back into a wolf. Yeah. Um, and I'll warg in the shikar so I can keep pace with you. I want to keep like a, a bird's eye view exactly. of everything. And, Got and it. Stay, yeah. Just kind of follow Bloody him system. as an owl. Mm -hmm. Easily enough, you guys won't arouse suspicion, especially since you're invisible mm -hmm. and you're just an owl flying. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Sokka, what are you doing? I'm chilling with the kids, mate, doing a little rat show. Like oh, rat yeah. Circus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Perfect. Fantastic. They're like doing rat like circus. <laughs> like a marionette puppet show, flips. but instead of puppets, it's cool. rats. Uh, yeah, you like druidcraft some of like, you know, the, the stuff that's caught in the trap of the drains. That's just like hair and twigs and other detritus. And well, the way your druidcraft works is that it works really well with this stuff because you're you're a city, you're like a underground city druid so you just turn some of like the sticks and the hair into like a makeshift ladder and a trapeze um <laughs> and you just have these rats going across this like you know just who knows who's whose hair this is but they're having a blast um, and the kids are loving it the kids are loving it go ahead and roll a performance check for okay me. at advantage because okay hold up um that Oof, those were both terrible. <laughs> I think I got a 10. A 10? Um, it's rats doing the circus show. So, again, kids, even when it's bad, it's good. Um, <laughs> so you're like, shit, uh, I'm so disappointed in myself. This I've never, uh, this has never happened before. Like, you're saying to yourself, uh, I'm, I'm so much better at this performance than I used to do. But the kids don't know any difference. Um, and, um, yeah. Uh, they're having a great old, grand old time. Love that for them. Uh, you... Go ahead, where are you headed? Uh, so okay, so right now we are at Tinctures, so it's up I there. I do have to post a picture of... Yeah, you're on the way on I will take a picture of it during the break, and I'll try to post it on a Discord yeah. channel. For you so, post since I'm close to the hot handle, I'm gonna just check there, just in case he's near a forge, because there's a... Well, makes sense. Maybe he would be. Yeah. So I'll check there first. Okay. Uh, you head to the the brazier. No, no, hot, uh, handle. hot handle first, just because he, 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 he might be able to. Okay, cool. Go ahead and roll the the, the investigation check. Ooh, Nineteen. Uh, investigation. So twenty one. Twenty one. Argus, where would you be? Um, probably at the flame. Okay. That would uh, that would be my second place. Though. Okay, cool. So you don't see anybody at the forge. You also don't see the forges on. Does it look like it's locked up, or does it look like it's been like abandoned? Um, it, it's hard to tell from the outside. But it's not like all closed up. It's not like you mean it's up. like the windows aren't boarded? Is that what you mean? Well, I mean stuff like that, like or like there even was a door. Well, it is normal business hours, and it should be open, but there's no smoke coming from the furnace. That's what you notice. Right. Um, I don't want to go in alone. It sounds like fire is on, but I'll just... And you also have a time limit. Right, so I'll just, I'll just move on to the uh, brazier. Okay, move on to the brazier. Um, Argus, explain to me what uh, to, to what Log sees. And uh, Trishenny, I suppose, too, as she's warding into her thing, um, as they come across the town square in the brazier. They see Argus pretty much as close as he can get to the flame, to, to the... Barrage, and if you look closely, his eyes are just blanked out. Mm -hmm. And his, any closer, your beard would catch fire. Yes, and his hands are in a prayer motion, but on fire, and just sitting there praying. Is there anyone else around? Uh, roll a perception check. Uh, let me see how. Oh, yeah, Chicago saw better. Yeah. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh wait. He has advantage because he's twenty. Hey. <laughs> what did you get? Uh, an eight. An eight. Uh, you don't. You're kind of pretty hyper focused on this scene that's unfolding with, with uh, Argus. Uh, Shikar does notice a few people. A couple of them appear not to not be looking so hot. 
Um, the they're far away from the brazier. That's what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, Sorry. Uh, ah, that's funny. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, they're not looking so hot, and the but most of them look to be okay. Granted, not a lot of people are out in the streets right now. Most people have stayed in their homes and are like don't know that this thing is over, and they're just waiting until they hear something. Um, there are some people that are moving about just. To, picking up the pieces of what has happened. There's a few um, that appear to be rummaging through the debris of a stall that got destroyed and um, trying to repair it. And there are others who appear to be looting another vendor stall that was destroyed. Um, We aren't the only looters. Yay! (laughs) Um, But other than that, uh, you don't see any stone sworn in the immediate area. So I'll just kind of telepath to him. Argus. Argus. You alright? Define alright. We, we saw you were missing and wanted to come find you. Oh. It, it's, it's been a, an interesting 24 hours. Um. Give, give me a minute, and I'll, I'll finish up some of my prayers. Did I get anything from Kosuth during my prayer time? Um, what are you trying to glean? Um, it was more strength helping me have the resolve to move on that we did what we needed to do and if there's any other thing that we that that he could give me to help move me on to help increase my resolve okay go ahead and just roll a straight wisdom check for me 30 20 30 20 you feel in your lungs heat. It gets hotter and hotter still. Blazing. Burning. You feel like all of your rage and all of your malice is building up within the, your, the cavity of air between your two lungs. Spicy. Hot. White hot. And you just have the instinct of What do you do? Um, that instinct of let it go, is it coming from any certain part of my body? Is it coming from my lungs? Is it coming from, or do we? It's, if you didn't know better, it's coming from your soul. Okay. I'll uh, reach for my hammer and hold it close to my chest where I assume my soul is Mm -hmm. and just try to shoot myself out towards the fire expressing my soul towards Kosu okay you're trying to just push your essence out and as you do you exhale through your nose and the you watch as the air from his nose comes out in not this steam but you know when hot air distorts um, distorts images, like kind of like mirages in the mm-hmm. desert, or if you're watching a, a, a grill on a hot summer day and you look for where like where the flames are up to the rest mm-hmm. of the lawn, and it's like those, those weird um, air mm-hmm. distortions, heat air distortions, you see that come out of his nose, and as it caresses upon the hammer, it glows red hot. From, from yellow to orange to red hot. It's up against his chest, why it's burning his clothes and his beard doesn't make any sense and why he's not in pain, you don't understand. And then it begins to cool and cool and cool. Argus, you feel just like sometimes flame ebbs and flows with the environment around it for a moment. As if 
The fire had caught gasoline and used up most of the fuel, and now is just blowing and getting rid of the rest of the fuel, consistent, tempered. Like you let go of something, but you also realize that this fire, whatever it's, whatever, whatever it, you realize that part of the fuel of this fire is your own soul. So as long as you still have a soul, this fire is not going away anytime soon. Okay. Um, I'll start to calm my hands down, finish up my prayer, and start picking up my ass, my uh, incense and stuff like that. And turn the log. All right. I'm invisible right now, by the way. <laughs> Oh, over here. Shakar like does a dive <laughs> bomb <laughs> just to, just to kind of help point you in the right direction. I'll kick up some dirt. You know I'm so <laughs> close to casting fairy fire in that area. <laughs> <laughs> now, all right, Mildoth might have uh, some of the red stuff waiting for you when we get back. If that you know <laughs> makes you feel better, oh, it entices yeah. you at all. Do Those our... of you who are outside and that are not deep underground here. This horn that appears to be catch, its audio capability appears to catch the entirety of the city within itself. It appear, and for you, those of you that are outside that can hear, especially since you are an owl in your form, uh, can sense that it is emanating from Cairn Tower itself. Um, meaning that it, um, is some sort of call to action, call to order, something. Um, roll a perception check, the three of you that are outside. I feel like I get advantage because I'm in my wolf and it's hearing. Yes, you do too because of your owl. <laughs> Perception. Well, no, this isn't hearing, this is looking. Okay, well, but so. it d- doesn't matter. But you have advantage yeah. on seeing anyway, so. Both are bad. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> 13? 14. 8. Uh, 14. Argus, you notice that there appear uh, some of the some stone sworn appear to come from side alleys. Look towards Karen Tower, look at each other, and start marching towards Karen Tower. Hey, what does that mean? General Assembly call. Just for the stone sworn or for everybody? You can come if you want. It's outside. Uh, the inner wall. Alright. I'll turn to Shakar. Shall we go? Uh, you can't give him. I can't give him directions. He's too far. He's so too he far. I'm too war. I'm still <laughs> warped. But. Well, so just, what, Shakar was over here. Turns his head. Just turns okay. his head 180 degrees and looks at you, tilts his head. Uh, so how mo- how much time would have passed? Like how long do I have to be invisible? Uh, you have about, I'm gonna say, due to I would have travel handle times. first and then to the brazier. Yeah, due to travel times, you probably maybe have 15, 20 minutes left, maybe if that. Like enough time to get back. Right. <clears throat> so yeah, so I'll say if you, if you want to go, but I can't, I won't be able to follow. But we can come back for you if that's for you. Well, I feel like we need to know what's going on in the town a little Sh- bit. Sh- Shakar can stay with you, and I can communicate to Shakar <laughs> to say that. <laughs> Does that talk to Trisha through? Yes, because I'm still warged into it, him. Yeah, so it it's does. Well, she can't it's just that you back, can't right? respond. Okay. Like, yeah, so your mind is, you see through all of his senses, and technically his mind is part of his senses, so yeah. Anybody that speaks telepathic with with the owl, you would be able to hear, but you would just have no way because you can't give the owl commands this far away. Right, but could I respond to Log if he, because it's a telepathic... No, no, it's not a daisy chain thing, unfortunately. Okay. You, what it is is that it's, you are just, 
you are just hearing what they're hearing, including what they're hearing in their brain. In their brain, it doesn't allow you to then speak through them or or cause their mind to do anything. Technically, that would be a command to their minds to try to respond. Okay. It's yeah. not. It's not the same thing. Um, uh, you're. It's like you're watching a live stream of what <laughs> the <laughs> what <laughs> Inception. You're watching a live stream of what they're experiencing. Okay. Uh, you don't have a chat function. Yeah. Uh, you get a blank sense from Shikar, or as much intelligence. Just as an you. owl. Just an owl. Just. Do you I mean, want to say? Technically, they don't have to. I don't have to share language with something. They just have to be able to understand the language. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no way mind works, but yeah. So <laughs> you understand. Yeah, and actually, I think owls do have a language too. Yes, they speak Sylvan. Yeah, which is wild. Yeah, I think giant owls specifically speak Sylvan. Yeah. I'm not sure so, if actual. So owls Sh- Shakar specifically yeah. could respond to me. But it couldn't be anything that Trishani right. told. Um, right. It, it would be yeah, specifically it Shakar who. It would be the owl going. <laughs> but if they oh. speak a language, then I then it's right. Um, that, that's it's, how, it's just I mean, whether like what's the, what's the intelligence of the owl well, specifically the, in the book. The, just so I know, the owl's intelligence is not great. It's two. Two. Okay. Yeah. So which is wild. To so me, you by hear the, the word who? Um, are you sure you don't want to take him back so that uh, Trishani can actually tell him to stay with me? Well, but I'm telling him to stay with you. And but what was the last command Trishani gave him? Well, to watch me find you. And that we found you. Familiars work as they they will prioritize your last command over any other command. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, I'll tell the, I'll tell them that we need unless to come they're back. unable to do so. So if you just grab Shikar, <laughs> you're, you're coming with me. <laughs> That's Her not buddy. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, back at home. Be with my hand that doesn't like having feelings. <laughs> right. uh, back. I can't feel this whole hand. Uh, back at the, back at the ranch, so to speak, at Miladonis, Um I'll just. Hey, um, looks like th- we found Argus, but uh, can somebody help me try to? I mean, it seems like everybody's being called. Can somebody help me? Get to Shakar and Argus and and uh, Log. Safkar, are you doing anything? I, I know Cole's out. I know. Safkar's like doing making one of the raps do flips and oh uh, no. I can't hear you. All right. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. You can and, feel oh, them. Yeah. Give a sense of touch in your body. I. That's literally the only thing that. That she has right now because she can't smell. Yeah, because right, you have no sense of you have no olfactory. I, I just love how you asked Theo or Safka a question, then went, "Oh, but I can't oh, hear you anyway." Can't. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's more like you guys have to, put, to like, two taps on my chest for no, one tap for yes. Right. Just pinch uh, me on the butt if we gotta go. <laughs> okay, if you, I, I assume since you're not getting me, I might have to just go myself. So I'll. I'll hold on to the connection for a little bit longer until I see where you guys, okay. how you guys decide to go, and then I will. Log, I will go have someone come after me. Okay, I'll, I'll send Trishani, because she says she can do the okay. thing. Okay, you guys part way, Shakar and Log head back to Miladonis at Tinctures for Tinctures, whereas Argus follows the Stone Swarm in with quite a few other dwarves towards the General Assembly outside the inner wall near Cairn Tower. And that's where we're going to take our first break, guys. I'll be back in a couple minutes. Um, if you're watching this episodically, please over head over to the next episode. Thank you for watching. Check out our Discord and our Twitter. We'll be right back.